Welcome back, folks, to the Wet Shavers Roundtable, episode 88. This is our monthly hot seat edition. I am Douglas Smythe from phoenixshaving.com, and with me, I think he's on this side, yeah. Mantic59. I'm a just think. Today, it'll just be uh, Mantic and I manning the reins, so to speak, for the show, because this is our monthly, as I mentioned in the beginning, hot seat edition, where you are our special guest. And it seems that we're going to have two hot seats open at the same time, so this should be interesting. This is the first. I also want to announce that this is going to be our, our season finale episode of what chippers roundtable and we'll be coming back in september but um and, you know this is probably the longest season in history i think it was, it was three year run <laughs> but we need a break we need some saturday nights off uh fran and i just to see some movies we're so behind and uh that's pretty much the only thing that's that's stopping us right now can keep going is uh the movie thing the lack of movies in my life so uh thank you all for understanding that but i think what what better way to end this season than uh with an, a hot seat edition wouldn't you say mantic oh yeah absolutely <laughs> So, Mantic, now I don't know how you want to do this. I mean, a lot of us are here, you know, for this special announcement. Should we wait to the end to tease them the entire time? or? Uh... Uh, no, I, I'll say something now. Uh, unfortunately, the, the actual details of the announcement got delayed by 24 hours, so it's actually going to be noon. Noon? noon. Uh, I, think, I think noon my time, which is central time, tomorrow. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll be sure to check that. But... Uh, the news is, uh, well, it's no secret that uh, I am a big fan of the One Blade Razor. Oh, yeah. And they are getting ready to announce a new product that is significantly okay. less expensive than uh, what they or, uh, what their original product is. Um I can't give a whole lot of detail right now, frankly, because I even I don't know all the details. Yeah. But I can say it's going to be at a price point everybody can afford. It'll be the one fl- the one blade for the rest of us. Uh, <laughs> and I arranged with them uh, with a little finagling and some wheeling and dealing to have them reserve ten percent of the first run for Sharpologist readers or people going through a Sharp- the Sharpologist link. So uh, they, they are guaranteeing the availability of 250 razors for... Uh, Your readers. For, for, my, for Sharpologist readers. And um, that's, uh, I think, going to go awfully quick uh, because of the, the price point they're talking about is just insane for what you get. So... Uh, that's the tease. Uh, I will be same blade as, though. Is it the same? Okay. And ding. <laughs> um, and uh, more detail will be tomorrow when I can announce it. Uh, it'll be on Sharpologist. I'll I'll announce it also on uh, social media and, and some other places. Get you some links and and some images and things like that. But. Uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be mind blowing. Excellent. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's that's really cool. Um, I don't really have. Oh, I for news for me, Blackbot was just released today. So this is finally, finally out, folks. And this is uh, well, my homage to Black Belt, which I always talk about. That classic aftershave, that musky aftershave splash, the cousin to High Karate. I finally was able to reproduce it uh, thanks to you guys voting on it at the Big Shave West. You really made that possible and really kicked me in the butt. And it's done, and it finally dropped today. So um, that's the news I got. Other, as for wet shaving news, man, Matt Pasarsik and I, he kind of took me in under his wing this week, and we went picking in the wild. And, man, I – you know, you think you know all, everything about picking uh, for vintage razors in the wild. You don't, especially when you're with the guy who does it for a living. I mean, this is his bread and butter. So the honey holes that he brought me to were just its just seeing how he does it. It's a lot more in line with um, 
American pickers than it is like antiquing. Because I mean, we were in like garages, we were in trailers. There was one woman's property, the four trailers, floor to ceiling was packed with stuff. And the stuff I found, I mean, I got a seagull in case, a gem micromatic in the case. Another gem in the case. I mean, this stuff was stacked on top of each other. And then I have these um, Valley Otis drops. Now, they, they're each different. They have two of them. They look, they look similar, the boxes. But this is the St. Louis Times, and this is the Orange Daily News. So these were special. You know, I don't know if they were gifts at the holiday, but crazy things here. I mean, an inj a Schick injector in the case. <laughs> I mean, like, it's unbelievable. Uh, I also – now, this is something I want to – uh, show on uh, I'd rather be shaving, but this is a safety blade hone. So it's a very, you know, it's the classic sh safety blade hone. And what's great about these finds is, you know, the labels are still there, the instructions are still there. Really, really cool and just unbelievable. I mean, look at this another gem. It's, talk about the year of the single edge. Look at that. It's just, it's in the purple. Ah, it's unbelievable. Sounds like you went through a combination of uh, pickers, American pickers, and hoarders. <laughs> yeah. I haven't seen orders yet. I oh. need to, though. I do need to. Though. I was reading something else about that earlier. A star razor, which I've been using for the last two days. It was magical, Mark. It was kind of like a dream when you find like that closet with stuff in it that you never... Oh, yeah, I kind of remember having all this. No, it was... Look at this. We got the yeah, the whole rolls right there. I even, even the instructions for the rolls. I mean, it just... And she knew uh, Perkins, the guy who wrote the Safety Razor Collector book. She actually had a signed copy of it he'd given to her. So, like, he'd roll through there. I didn't find a rubber set, but I did find the box. And, like, so little is known about these things that when you find anything piece of it, you got to grab it because it might that might reveal something. Uh, this I actually found in a place called the Pickle Barrel. This stuff is awesome, and I will be talking about this on an episode of I'd Lad to Be Shaving, so I don't want to give too much away about that. Um, and then in the case, a Super Speed, and, uh, which is great because I picked up a, one – a week earlier at, a, at an antique shop. Uh, we'll be talking about that uh, later on. This one actually came with a blade case. This one did not. But, I mean, all these razors in the case, though, cannot believe. And that's it for my uh, cash. But Matt, he bought over 100 razors, not necessarily in the boxes. But, I mean, even a toggle was in the, the grab bag that he – when I walk into the trailer, he'd beaten me to the trailer. I, the guy, the woman's husband was talking my ear off about, like, Freemasons or something. I don't know. And so he ran out the door with her to the trailer – and when I walk up there, it's Matt, it's Marissa, and Jeff with the cameras inside there. Lights on Matt. Because in his hand is like five fat boys. Just like, I was like, so I'm trying to squeeze through them to get up in the trailer. But I could not believe it. And this was in Phoenix? No, no. Oh. God, no. This was in Globe. <laughs> no, this was in Miami. Miami, Arizona. Mm. Next to Globe. We went to Miami Globe area. I probably shouldn't reveal these locations. But um, Miami, is they have a whole antique district. Now that's the antique shops. This is not where we were. We were off roading. We were, I mean, seriously, like I it had a deliverance vibe going on. I didn't feel safe half the time, but just had to jump in there. And that's when you, you know, you, that's what you got to do. It's a leap of faith when you're looking for, uh, when you're picking. <laughs> okay. So that said, we should probably begin this episode. Who's first? Guys, we got two open seats, two hot seats for you. Each person or the both of you will get 10 minutes apiece. So who's up? <laughs> anybody it is might, there a delay it might be a short one today <laughs> it might be just us talking about yeah. one blade and collecting yep <laughs> okay okay we got jonathan romanoff where is he i'm gonna shoot you an invite john right now all you need is headphones my man okay and we get we got Matt P too. Aaron, I'll get you in the next round. I can't have two superstars, you and John's, but I don't know if both of you could do this at the same time, but we'll pull in Matt Parler just because he has something to add to this story. First, where is he? Okay, Matt. You guys, I just sent you invites. They should be should be something on your screen. You have to click. Okay, there we go. Yeah, working yep. on it. Give me one second to try and pick up the camera again, guys. Paying his yes. bills. <laughs> yeah, we got your address. We just docked you. <laughs> oh. Or you just docked you. 
What was it? Who was it we had that uh, it was like a creepy, creepy cabinet the whole time? Nathan Clark. <laughs> oh, my God. That was like a Saw episode. Did, did you see the edited version of it? In the edited version, that. I put like a little boy crying in the corner of the cabinet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this camera has got to work right. Who am I talking to? Is this Matt or is this John? This is Matt. Okay. <laughs> John, where are you? Co comment on the side, John, if you're having problems. John? Jonathan. <laughs> Palm red. Nothing. So you didn't get an invite is what you're saying? Okay, let's... It says I've already sent a request to you. Nothing, huh? Are you using Google Chrome? Actually, it says you're... Actually, I don't know what it says. I think I got it. Okay, Jonathan, I'm going to send you an invite one more time. It's just spinning. <laughs> the room? <laughs> Okay, that sounds like a bandwidth thing. That sounds like something on your end. Okay. Okay, Aaron, we're pulling you in. As for Matt, Matt, just turn your computer around so we can see you. You might want to hide your address that's <laughs> in the camera right there. Which one? <laughs> You'll have to blur that in the video. Yeah, do Douglas. You, yeah, yeah, well, do you see the, the letters and you see the uh, image yep, on the screen? Yep. Yeah, I can see the image. I'm just trying to get the damn thing to turn around for me. Oh, well. All right. We'll do it like we did last time where I'm having to kind of jiggle the thing. Jiggle the handle. Jiggle the handle. That was a cover band in the area I grew up in. I remember, classic right. jig, jiggle the handle. Okay. So, Aaron, I'm summoning you now. John, you figure it out. Sit next to your, uh, your Wi-Fi. Closer. Okay. There we go. Hey, Matt. Hey guys, hold on one second. <laughs> you know, hey, that was too easy, here. Aaron. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah Technical difficulties are cool. Okay, I'm setting the 10 minute timer right now. Uh -oh. Okay, so we got Aaron of Frugal Shaves, we got Matt Paller, we got Mantic, and we got myself. What's going on, guys? What's going on, Aaron? Uh, not too much. Been crazy busy between being uh, everybody being sick and then my son breaking his leg and then just. <laughs> Traveling to both the uh, big meetups. That's right. Absolutely yeah. uh, crazy. I didn't. Yeah, I, you did a lot actually this year. You were at the Big Shave West and the Maggards. Yeah, I had to uh, plan for a year to do that. Yeah, you know. Yeah, no, it's you really did. I thought you were going to have a table at the Maggards though, but you didn't end up having a table. No, I got in uh, late. You know, they had such limited space. Right, right, yeah. And well, we can see why they had limited space now. At first, that was we were like, "How could they possibly have limited space?" Well, they're living in half the building, so exactly, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we actually we can we can talk a little bit about the maggots. I think we we can talk about it, right? I mean, it was it was, it was a good time. So. It was a really good, good time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was really something else. Um, I don't even know how to describe it. It was like um. Uh, procession almost through you know it already had a temple vibe because it's an old mason temple i believe but the the room itself the ballroom it was like a procession up the stairs through like like new orleans style all they needed was to be carrying a coffin the line was soapbox. all the way to the front door at one point I was mean, it really it was crazy <laughs> it was crazy i don't know how they decided to set that up as, I mean, Mantic, was it like that the year before? Yeah, actually it was. It was very similar, but uh, not as many people. So uh, when I was talking with uh, with Brad, he's definitely going to make some tweaks for next year. Uh, you know, probably put the food somewhere else so there's yeah. more room on that upper floor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Space out the uh, table. Mm -hmm. Come. And uh, yes, I'm coming. Uh, <laughs> woof, woof, woof. Sorry. Um, <laughs> Sorry. Flashbacks yeah. to his other life, and accommodates uh, more of the crowd in a in a uh, more of like a flea market kind of way. Yeah. Just different tables. Okay, yeah, yeah. because Ugh. all the corners of the room. Let me just kill that. Okay, all the corners of the room had like big name soapers or whatnot. So those would be points where people would stop, 
and the line would back up, you know? So, like, once you made it from Barrister Man, you'd make your way down. Then you'd hit me at one corner, too, and everyone would stop. And I'd have, you know, you have to talk to everybody, like, individually and so on and so forth. But you could see people getting itchy behind them and just kind of zoning out. So it's almost like working in a sub shop where you kind of have, like, you know, figure out how to be nice to people but still keep the line moving, which is – you know, it was a lot to put on us. <laughs> and, and I think later in the day, people kind of realized that and started skipping around a little. But still, there were, you know, four or five people deep at pretty much all the tables. Oh, yeah. And uh, if for, for myself, you know, I was trying to get uh, video vendors away from their tables for videos. And I missed four of them simply because there were so many people that I couldn't get them free. So mm -hmm. I, I'm still going to do something with the with the four I missed, whether it's a, by text or a podcast or something. But I missed uh, doing four different videos simply because there were so many people up there. It was yeah. insane. It, it had a definitely a different vibe to me than Big Shave West. There was more, and, and this might sound wrong, and it's not. Don't take this as a negative at all. But it seemed like Big Shave West had a little more energy to the crowd, and Maggard was a little more sedate but more focused, more intense. <laughs> Just, yes, we needed some prods. Really, <laughs> it was really uh, with Big Shave West. Uh, most of us knew each other. Uh, yeah. it felt like. Whereas at Maggard's. I screen names the, yeah it was screen <laughs> names uh so it was it was yeah definitely a very different feel uh ended up finding out you know that all these people that i that i you know have chatted with didn't know by sight were there and i just missed them yeah yeah yeah, yeah. another difference i don't i don't know what this is i think it's just the midwest it's just geographical too like the feel and the people are just it's just a different breed um and I don't mean that in a negative or a positive way. I just it's, it's just an observation. a different culture, yeah. Yeah, just an observation. Like at Big Shave West, everyone was like looking you in the eyes of that. People were like looking at their feet or just doing, they talk to you like they're Eddie Vedder, you know, like <laughs> which is not, again, love Eddie Vedder. It's not a bad thing, but it's just like lots of things made sense to me that I couldn't get by just participating online in something like this. Um, so it connected a lot of dots for me too. And it was really cool. You know, it was really just great to finally like uh, meet a lot of these people that I never, ever had a chance to meet in the past so um, which was the yeah. one where we had the video of uh matt basarchik snoring so that was it that was that was oh god <laughs> yeah because they were sharing a room <laughs> yeah and the thing is i'm typically the guy who's snoring but i didn't even get a chance with them this guy everything in life with him is a competition with me even like <laughs> sleeping like the yeah. stuff you see on the show that's real that's really happening you and know like, he knew those eggs which ones were fake you know that right I am convinced that Matt knew which ones. He was too confident. You know, the thing is, I kept grabbing the same color, too. So it's like I did it to myself. Like, I should have, like, realized there was a pattern. However, you wouldn't know that unless you did it twice anyways. But I just happened to grab both because I'm a jackass. But, yeah, no, it is his crew. So I, you got to wonder. It makes a comedy but, uh, gold. Yeah. <laughs> but, no, I'm glad you're here, too, Matt, just to change up the, the conversation a little sure. bit. Because this other super speed that I found, this is thanks to Matt. Now, what happened in that is I went picking with Matt uh, in cyberspace. <laughs> he was on location at this antique shop in uh, Atlanta, and he's texting me. This is what I do all the time. You know, if I'm in at an antique shop, I'll reach out to people like a lifeline, like Matt or somebody like, hey, what do you guys think of this razor? You know, what's the, you know, is this worth, is this a good price? So on and so forth. And that's what I thought Matt was doing with me. And then he was like, you know, you want to grab some stuff for you? And I was like, uh, yeah, if you don't want it, but the price is... <laughs> Again, we're crazy. Like this in the case with the blade bank was 1995. Like you don't see that ever. I mean, this should be uh, triple times the, or at least double the cost uh, at an antique shop. So I was having him scoop up stuff for me. And then within the hour, you just got him in the mail heading my way too. So thank you, Matt, for that. You know, I mean, it's, I've never been on an international treasure hunt or a nationwide treasure hunt from, uh, well, uh, <laughs> Phoenix to Atlanta, we had a couple. And I was in bed, too. Like, I was, like, a couple hours behind you as he's, like, showing you pictures of stuff. And I'm just like, yep, grab it, grab it. I had, like, a ball tip in the case, a red tip. But, yeah, you just – you found a honeypot. You don't see this it often. This is actually a great shave. Yeah. Uh, the Black Beauty. Uh, yeah. Can you see I, – I, I'm having to turn my laptop around uh, just like last time. Yeah, no, we can see it. It it does not give a very aggressive pull. You know, I, I daily use a uh, above the tie. Um, oh yeah, that big difference. And uh, but this is a great shave. 
I, I don't know anything about this, guys. Uh, it's kind of, I just want, you know, Mantic or anybody, if anybody has any idea what I'm holding. You are holding, an, yep, you are holding a Black Beauty. Um, the adjustable, uh, it, it, Put it in the fridge. I, I swear, I don't think it's doing anything until I realize that my sink's full of nasty facial hair. What's the date code on the bottom? Did you, did you catch that? Have you looked yeah. it up yet? Uh, let's see. Date code, I got a zero and a four. So there's no real date code. Oh, you got a zero. That's cool. But be an uh, O, wouldn't it? Or an O and a four, made in USA, Gillette. Uh, but it's a great shape. Yeah, they, is... they only used O's, I think, for like one year, but they realized they're just difficult. Or what's that? Q's. I might be thinking, I might be confusing that for Q's actually. But let's uh, see. It is. It was it, it was a lot of fun. You know, I can't believe that you were available, and, and it, you know, it. it I was in bed. <laughs> it was supposed to work. I, I mean, I, I, granted, I know you get a lot of fan stalkers, and I'm thinking, myself, yeah, this is going to go well. <laughs> oh, I don't have fans. I just have stalkers. Uh, <laughs> and have just... you gotten that re uh, restraining order yet? <laughs> <laughs> Stop sending me naked pictures of yourself, Matt. It's just weird at this point. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, I know. Yeah, no, I used to be much more attractive. I just want you to know. <laughs> but, uh, he was <laughs> a we all. Stash, and this guy, uh, he, you know, I told him, I said, you know, you've got a hell of a stash here. And he's just, uh, you know, the owner of shops participating. And, uh, you know, so I promised that I'd send him a copy of this uh, episode, Douglas. Oh, oh, cool, cool. Well, tell him I, what's his name. Uh, his name is Jerry. He owns Way Back Wind, He's and uh, I sent him a, a jar. Jerry, thank you so much for. <laughs> thank you, Jerry, for making that happen. I hope to send Matt in there again for future uh, purposes. Well, and Jerry also uses regular soap, and I thought I had a, a heart attack. I said, God, I'm going. To oh yeah, you got to go back there. Go maybe make some trades with him or something like that. Uh, but yeah, that, that Black Beauty. Matt talks about not. I think that particular that model uh, on the Top Gun episode of I'd Lather Be Shaving, the first part of that episode, part one. Oh, you one. mean the movie that you didn't see? Exactly. So clearly you saw that. <laughs> you saw that what I didn't see. <laughs> uh, I also saw you uh, roofie him. Uh, no, not roofie him. Uh <laughs> yeah, we don't use that term. When you, when you roofie another guy, you it's, it's something. I don't have a term for that, in fact. But uh, yeah, yeah, something like that happened. <laughs> but guys, I got to let you go and yes, get the sir. next two Thank people you. in. Oh, but Matt, thank you again. That was awesome. And Aaron, thanks for joining us. Right Aaron, on. is that AstroTurf you're sitting on? Did you cover your couch in AstroTurf? No, that's a uh, that's my wife's uh, pillowcase. Uh, it looks like AstroTurf with a golf ball, like on your shoulder. Like, <laughs> was no, it 3D not... printed? Yeah, it's, pretty, really. uh... it's, it's green with like little yellow dots. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Aaron. We'll check with you very soon. All right, man. Okay, who's next, guys? Guys, just let me know in the chat box. In fact, let's form a line in the chat box if you want to be, you know, for uh, batters up. But I'm also seeing if there's any questions. We can also use the question feature too down below. And I also have a poll going for what night you guys would like to see us do this show in for future episodes when we come back this fall. Because um, Saturday nights, it's been good. But uh, I don't know if the time could be better or the day could be better. What do you think, Mantic? Saturday nights? Uh, you know, I was actually thinking about that myself and, and just for me personally, actually, I prefer Thursdays, yeah. but, uh, okay. you know, it's just going to be, let's see what the poll says after you're, after you're done. Yeah. I don't have Thursday up there though. Uh, I should probably put that up there right now. Edit. Oh, sure enough. Okay. Well, I will put it up there cause I'm open to anything. Well, if you're open to anything, put all the days in. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, who's next? And this is going to be out of order. <laughs> this is how, if I was king, I would set up the days of the week. <laughs> okay. Who's next, guys? Who's going to take a hot seat? Come on. This is our last episode of the season. Let's get someone in there that we haven't. John Romanoff, are you still with us? Yeah, the Black Beauty short handle is really nice too. I actually prefer that one. Well, in the meanwhile, we can keep talking about the Maggers meetup. <laughs> uh, actually, I'd like to. I'd like to ask a question, and the others are are gone already. But since you know you're obviously familiar with it, uh, I did want to ask about 
uh, vintage razors in general because that is that historically not been a real big interest of mine. I've gotten yeah. a few years ago for like, you know, $10, $15, some super speeds. Uh, I got a, a fat boy for $15 once. But what uh, what kind of price changes have you seen over the past few years? Have they risen dramatically or just risen kind of with the times? Or uh, what are what are you kind of seeing generally uh, in and even are you even seeing them anymore? I mean, down here in my my area, they're gone. They're gone. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Uh, yeah. So I was just kind of wondering what what the general take was on uh, on vintage razors. I've seen them double and sometimes triple in price. Really? Uh, yeah, I really have. Over, uh, over the course of what time period? Probably five years. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I mean, only five years ago, I was walking in and I was getting really good prices on it, you know, for raises and antique shops. They didn't know what they had really, um, but nowadays, yeah, what all the hype, people will run in there, and you know, they just create such a buzz over these things that the antique dealers, whether they know or not what they have, they always they they want higher, um, they want to make a higher profit off it these days. It seems like, and especially like. Whenever, like, yeah, I know when I do a remake of a razor, when you go to eBay now and try to find that razor, that price has jumped up too for the original. And even aftershaves, like vintage aftershaves, that wasn't there was never a market to my knowledge for vintage aftershaves. And now, since we've been talking about Black Belt for the last like six months, that's now I, I saw two bottles for $130 on eBay Ooh. the other day. Yeah, it was only $60 when I first started talking about it. So we might be causing this, man. <laughs> yeah, I could very well be. Uh, but yeah, no, it's so like whenever I find anything like that, that whole thing in Arizona, I mean, uh, in Southern Arizona last week, it's amazing. Like just, I mean, I could not believe it. And you don't see stuff in the cases a lot of the time when you do it's in the wrong cases or with the blade banks, like you just don't see that. So I mean, it really was a throwback to um, about five years ago. Mm. Okay. And that's what I've noticed anyways. Okay. What do we got going on here? But you know, another thing is, is, is like retirement areas. That's a good place to find these things because it's like God's waiting room. Older people are going there and they're bringing everything they have and uh, you know they're trying to get rid of it. They're getting older. And so that's what I've noticed. Arizona is a good, good place for that. Um, I'm trying to think what else I've learned in the last, glean from Matt over the last week. Um, the internet. The internet kind of made everything more accessible too. So where prices were this – you know, they were right here before the internet became popular. When the, when it started becoming popular, wet shaving online and whatnot, uh, prices dropped, but more product was available now, and that's why the prices dropped. But now, more product isn't as much <laughs> isn't as much available as it once was. Mm -hmm. So prices have gone back down to what they were after the initial price jump. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, I'd like to see a chart for that. Okay, who's taking a hot seat? Jim, are you? Jim, Judy. Misdating information. Oh, Christian's here too. Who's going to take a seat? Okay, Jim, Judy, Jim, are you answering me? Like, yes, I'm here, or yes, you want to take a seat? Okay, John, we're going to try you again, and Jim, Judy. Do, 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 do. Jim, sending you an invite right now. Jim actually proposed to his girlfriend at the Big Shave West, Mantic. I don't know if you saw that. Yeah, I sure did. Oh, yeah, you did, actually. Yeah, you were right there on stage. <laughs> John sending you an invite. Oh, honey, can you turn the light on? No, the other light. Oh, never mind. Hey. Hey. What's up, Jim? You want to poke your head in? No, really not. <laughs> we can hear you, Stephanie. <laughs> can you hear me? He said he could hear oh, you. Oh, yeah, we can hear you. <laughs> I, I had to switch to the laptop. My, oh, yeah, no, you should have. What were you my, on before? I was on my gigantic PC that I do all my photography on, and uh, normally it works no, great. Right it didn't work with the crowd. Well, now you look like uh, Dr. Johnny Fever, your <laughs> WKRP. You know, you really does. <laughs> Dude, I love this artwork, by the way. I can't, I can't uh, claim that artwork. That's well, lost. Yeah. I did steal that artwork, and I, I tweaked know. it out a little bit. But uh, th there was one version I made where he's actually holding a shave vet. Robbie oh, has really? a big shave vet in his hand. Yeah. Oh. But that one, uh, yeah, that I can't. In fact, the soap <laughs> that I made for the forum – yeah, I had to change the network because I was too afraid of them coming after me. Right, because that that's happening more and more these days. Like, yeah, all Cease everyone out there is getting. I got you. Yeah, yeah. for sure, for sure. So nice to see everybody, by the way. Yes, 
Yeah. So what do you think, John, for uh, for the next season of the Wet Shivers Round? What day works for everybody? Well, because you're not so, here often these days, it seems uh, yourself. I'm not because the majority. I mean, listen, um, I work Monday through Friday until five or six. And then usually on the weekends, my wife has like either a to do list or the South Florida Wet Shavers takes up every bit of my weekend. Yeah. So but Fridays at six o'clock is good. I get off Fridays at four thirty five and then we could jump right into it. And I could just like I could even do it from work, you know, which to watch. So I like that. I like Fridays. The weekends is a little harder for me, but you know, okay. so we got I, Thursday and Friday. Those are both the work. I consider that the weekend also the end yeah. of the week. Uh, yeah. It's the beginning you, of the weekend, you know, at least if you're, if you're, uh, you're relaxing, you're grabbing a beer or I voted you know, for something it. like that. What was that? I'm Jim? listening. <laughs> Jim, you're always looking down on us. Evening. Sunday evening. Of Sunday course. evening is good. I mean, you know. I, I voted for Sunday. Ah. Okay. So that's nice. another, so none of us are I, I going don't to know agree on any one day. Right, right. Listen, unfortunately, it's it's going to be impossible no. to make everybody happy. You I, know? So I've learned. But Mantic, what's new? It's nice, yeah. to see you. it's nice to see you, Mantic. Can, see can you, you hear me? Yes, I can. Uh, okay, I'm just making sure you're still there. Yes, <laughs> He's I was just typing on the chat. <laughs> On the chat window. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, you're you're like you're the guy that's that's answering all the questions <laughs> because I, I'm wearing glasses and I still can't see it. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So I'm good. No, I, I love that you guys were just talking about vintage and about uh antique finds and stuff. Yeah. Because I go antiquing in Fort Lauderdale, Broward, Dade County, all well, over Florida, Miami. that's perfect too. That's also God's waiting room. So oh, man, yeah. you go to Miami. Where and you where know, I was, time. Miami, Arizona, yeah. though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The best time is to hit them up when, like, when you know people are. You watch the obituaries and you see all these guys are dead, and then their their wives are looking to get rid of their their stuff. This is yeah. estate know. sales, yeah, yeah. yeah when exactly. Harry met Sally, <laughs> and they want to combine obituaries with a par- <laughs> open apartments. Yeah, but, for sure. No, that is I just that's a strategy. I, I that's like a good. I tried. I tried a few. Wild. Say that. Oh yeah. What was that again, Jim? Oh, I said I've, I've I've tried a few of those, but I haven't had any luck in the wild finding anything. Yeah. Oh, it can well, be tough. I mainly look for. Uh, I mean, you- I co- I collect the vintage. Um, I collect. I'm sorry, I'm interrupting everybody. Sorry, <laughs> let no, Jim you, talk. I don't know what Jim's doing. I don't know. I thought he was doing sign language. Does he have something no, going on there, or what? I, no, I was rubbing my hand. Oh. <laughs> oh, okay. This no. is like, Where uh, is the camera? Is the it best just as like, are you holding it razor? between your knees or something? Like, yeah. No, I, I, I love going in the in the wild no, and finding sitting, stuff. It's sitting on my lap. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Of course. Yeah. Uh, so, so tell I'm us not a using a webcam about... right now. I'm using my phone. So I just had it propped in my lap. Oh, nice. Okay. You have an Android. Is that what you're using, an Android phone? See, oh. was that Spanish or yeah. are we looking? Yeah, okay. I think that was. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I'm interested. I'm actually interested in yeah. hearing about what Mantic has to say because I want to know about this new razor. Um, I I have <laughs> a lot of razors. He's not saying anymore. He's he's. I, I can't. <laughs> I'm not allowed. Dude, it, I have a lot of razors, a lot, and and I don't mind spending. You know. Um, mainly I'm a straight razor guy. So Mike Martinez comes out with a new blade and it's, you know, hundreds of dollars. I don't have an issue with spending money, but that one blade for, for just one razor for me to sit on the shelf, it didn't make it for me, but I have been trying a lot of really nice razors lately. Um, some of my guys, they're sending me, um, the charcoal razor and, um, and yeah, they're sending me all these really nice, uh, razors that have, that have just been like all of a sudden everywhere, especially on Facebook, there there's nothing else in Shave Gear Raffle except for like expensive razors yeah. and and you know really expensive brushes. So I think we need to back up a little bit with this. I know, wanna honestly. see brush, I wanna see like uh I don't know, some custom art artisan brush handles. Mm-hmm. I know there's there are makers out there already, but I want to see some metal ones to match some of the funky handles like you see coming from charcoal goods. Right and, and Rod right. and a couple of other guys, but the only one that's doing that right now, Nathan Clark, as far as reliable metal brush handles. 
Yeah, he's doing uh, aluminum and whatnot. I, I like his I like his handles. I oh, just, I love I them. Like, I love them. But I want to see more. Like, like everyone, everyone's the same. Even like when a group had one made, it's that brush handle just with a logo on it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so it's the same. Everybody's getting the same shape, the same everything. Uh, but I agree. You know, I know that charcoal razors also, if I'm correct, they have um, they have a brush that matches their razor handles. Am I correct? One. They have one uh, brush that, oh, they that matches one handle. Yeah. Okay. I right. haven't seen that yet. It's I, a good idea, though. I like it. I, I saw do. some I neat. That. Sorry. Go on, Jim. He also put out that uh, collectible brush. It was very large knot. And the handle mm -hmm. looked like a whale tooth or something like to that effect. Oh, that was Brian. So there I didn't are know some. That. I think they're mass produced. I mean, I think that was a very limited run. It was just more of a curiosity. And but he said right. they they sold out. There's a market for that, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. just yeah. I mean, there's a market so, for everything. <laughs> there, is, <laughs> there, really there is. is. So King C. Gillette, right? Oh, magic. I mean, you. Were who is yeah. talking? I think Jim is. Jim, oh, you were asking I was say, as far as vintage, as far as vintage uh, razors. Uh, I just recently picked up a Micromatic clog proof, and I ordered some uh, uh, gem blades from Conat, the coated gem single edge blades. I got a really good deal on them. They were two hundred for less than thirty five dollars shipped from the UK. And I've gotten two of the best shaves I've ever had from a single edge razor that's probably 70, 80 years old. So, uh, and I got that off of eBay for fifteen, twenty dollars ship. So, yeah, if, I mean, I'm, if, I'm, uh, don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm not against uh, vintage technology at all. Uh, it's just never been a big interest to me. Uh, I've got you know a few super super speeds laying around. I've got a Schick Krona from the sixties that actually shaves me really well. Yeah. Uh, but it's just not, it's just not an, uh, for whatever reason, uh, vintage razors, has this never been a big interest of mine. Well, I think that makes sense with what yeah. you do. Matt. You're like, Mantic, you are there, you are put on this earth to give advice on how to shave. I and think you can't so, back yeah. up something that you can't see as a consistent, you know, I mean, uh, it's, it's a, each razor is different when it's antique and when yeah. it's vintage. Exactly. I don't know its history. So I, can't, I think that's, again, can't get re consistent results. That's very true. Yeah, so you, you don't feel comfortable recommending that, so you don't get behind it. So that makes yeah. perfect sense to me. That's for the sharpologist and where you are. So uh, how do you feel as far as, like, recommending a razor right, or a new guy? Um, like, if, if you meet up with a, some new person that's getting into wet shaving, yeah. right? So, like, if if they ask me, what do you want, you know, what what would you recommend to start off with? I, I like something like the Parker variant, which is adjustable, 57 bucks, not a huge investment, but it gives them the option to put, I mean, numerous different blades with different gaps and get a ton of different types of shaves. And then they could find what works best for them. But I, I, I know a lot of guys are, they're like, you know, you should get a Gillette Slim and they're 15 bucks and they're adjustable, but you know, a Parker variant, uh, and, and I know they're hard to find, but, uh, you know, that's the type of razor that I think, me personally, I recommend, you know, I, I don't tell people that, you know, uh, you know, something, I like open combs, so I like an open comb razor, you know, and I'm aggressive when it comes to shaving, so I like, you know, straight razors, but, uh, you know, something like that, I mean, what what do you recommend to, to a new guy? Actually, uh, I have put out some articles on on Charpolitis about that very that very question and partly with dealing with a newbie it, it for me it's partly a question of a combination of what they can afford for one thing and being able to get a repeatable result from a product that has enough reviews so that they can expect a particular range, if you catch my drift. Um, okay. You know, I, I recommend quite often, you know, the, the, the Edwin Jagger DE89 series is enormously popular. The 
The Mirkur right. heavy duties are enormously popular. You can find right. a gazillion reviews on them to get an idea of what to expect. Right. If they have, if they have the, the 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 budget for it, and you know, if they don't like it for whatever reason, they're reasonably easy to, for for lack of a better word, get rid of if they want something else. Yeah, yeah. right. Um, I, I agree. If they if they the, the, have you know if they're if they're on a tight budget really tight and but want to get kind of the flavor of double edge shaving, you know the the Dorco PL six hundred two which is all plastic, but uh, it's well balanced. It's reasonably well built for a for, for a plastic razor and it's twelve bucks. Um, right. I I do also like the variant for someone who can afford it for the exact reasons you've said. I used to be a huge huge Mirkur Progress fan until the right. variant came along and then you know out it went. Um, yeah. So, you know, there are some specific variables to keep in mind for a newbie. And one of the variables I, I am concerned about and have them shy away from is a vintage razor unless they have one sitting around at like grandpa's house uh, right. that they can just grab for nothing. You know, in that right. case, and hey, that's... give it a flyer, give it a shot. But as, as Douglas said, the prices even on these very common vintage razors are going up to the point where you might as well buy new. Yeah. 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 I, I agree mm -hmm. with you. I think what you're saying is important. And, you know, I, I don't know how many, what do we have, 17 people on this show right now or something to that effect? Yep. Am I correct? Yeah. You know, you reach a huge uh, amount of people, you know. And and I I log on to your to your interviews, and um, and I watch all of the sharpologists. Uh, I love watching um, um, your guy that does the uh, the smaller version. He does it on the side. The uh, he used to be in my group. Oh, Joe uh, Borelli for the podcast. Yeah, Joe Borelli. Mm -hmm. Joe Borelli comes out with like a really mini me, a little little yeah, mantic. Yeah, he comes out. <laughs> he comes out with these great ideas for you know. Uh, the guy that d can't afford to buy a seventy or eighty dollar strop. Here's yeah. how you use newspaper. Newspaper, yeah. You know, so I thought that was a really good idea. I did too. I did too. You know, and 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 I absolutely respect anybody that will be able to come up with ideas to make this more um, enjoyable and economical for everyone. I really do. Douglas has like Douglas has just like moved out from this. I remember when I first got into wet shaving, um, you know, there was only a couple of stores online, Douglas and and a, one or two other big stores. But uh, I always shied away from these other guys because when I went to Douglas's store, everything was pretty much there. You didn't have to go anywhere else to find what you were looking for. OK, I, I, I'm going to plug something really quick, Douglas, because <laughs> I love this. It's not wet shaving. But it is mustache related. You sell this. I this do. is this is the mustache. Uh, it's called Dandy Candy Mustache Trainer. I I just started growing my mustache two months ago, uh -huh. and it's getting a nice curl to it. Uh, but I will tell you that I tried eight or ten different other guys' stuff, along with making my own with beeswax and coconut oil. Not as easy as you think, huh? <laughs> no way. Man. I go back to this every single time, you know. So it's it's the the knowledge that he put into making these items so that you can go into them, you know. Uh oh, somebody we lost, left. We lost Jim. That's no, oh, okay. But you know, just simple things like this that make you want to go back. You know, I mean, it's not a, a seventy dollar razor or a forty dollar razor or a ten dollar brush. It's it's the other things, your CAD deodorant. You know what I mean? You have other things that just make my life so Still much working. easier. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And they work. That's what's yeah. important. They well, work. Well, you're talking to the guinea pig right now, actually. But thank you. Yeah. I appreciate that, John. Yeah. No, listen, you know, uh, I, I give you props, dude, because – and nobody – I mean, there's only 17 people on. But I don't know if there's any of the South Florida wet shavers that are coming to my meetup next weekend in Tampa. Oh, but, that's right. That's next weekend. Yeah, next Saturday we have uh, we have sixty five people scheduled. Did um, you get the soap? We, 
Not yet. It's on its way. Okay, yeah. But, okay. but it's a secret soap that nobody knows about. <laughs> yeah, no, <it's> okay. <laughs> I, I don't Only mean my soap. soap. I mean, yeah, soap no, you, I hope you have soap. Yeah, there. no. They they know about they know about the uh, the rock star and the midnight's um, these these other soaps that we had made um, by uh, Uncle John's made these soaps for us. These are just small two ounce soaps with uh, two ounce aftershaves to go in the bag with the shirts. Very cool. But I, I, I was talking to Anthony uh, McKenzie and these guys, and I said, "Look, we need to put something super amazing in there that nobody is going to know about." So the group paid the group all of the funds that we saved. That these people realize, you know, we make all this money, all this money, we just used it to buy this soap from you. So we're really excited. We can't wait, and we don't even know what the scent is. It's like completely, I'm oblivious to it. So. But oh yeah, it, that's right. Yeah, it's gonna be cool. Hey, dude. Hey, how's up, Chad? We got Chad. I pulled Chad hey, in while you were talking, John. No, Since that's no, good. That's good. If I'm anyone probably else is, past my ten minutes. No, well, already. hold on. Don't go anywhere, yet, John. This has been I'm not, very interesting. You've been talking about me. This has been very interesting. <laughs> uh, but no, Sorry, if anyone man. else? Well, while we're waiting for other people, you know, people are kind of bashful today, so I'm, I want to hold on to our our, our seats, right. <laughs> or you guys in the seats. But um, yeah, no, I'm looking forward to this meetup. I. I'm going to be attending uh, via live stuff that you guys are doing. You know, yes, I've never seen you yeah. down to Florida. We have, um, we have quite a few people. Busta is going to be there. Right. And I'm Kelly depending Garrity on Busta from to your house. Works. That's um, the one thing. When you know Busta's yeah. showing up at a meetup, he's going to be live with yeah. his whole Yeah, ensemble. yeah. Oh, I love sure. how you and Mantic, Mantic you and Busta were, were going at each other. With, yeah. I, I saw both those videos. I wanted to send them yeah. up on two separate screens, too, to really like blow my mind. But uh, I, was, I was so impressed. I got to be honest. I was impressed with the Big Shave West. And I know you guys probably don't want me to talk because it's like it already happened. But <laughs> all of the videos that I can go back to YouTube and watch that everybody put out, I mean, just amazing. 500 people you know or more right mm, yeah I don't it's think tough. It was that much it's I, tough it's really well people um, coming and going peter was positioned right in front of the door the front door and he had a good bird's eye view and he was saying five to six hundred people really? but yeah the thing is this is what made it tough is i was i was so i just wanted an exact count this year that i bought bracelets i bought all these different things to try to keep track of people that were coming in there the thing yeah, is they, i only had them at the front door yeah. though so i was missing people yeah. coming in the back door so right. and i could see throughout the day walking around with no bracelets on and no stickers but i thought between the bracelets i just didn't i forgot all about the back door so next year I'll be doing things a little differently, but like I year after you think the third year I'd get this right, but I've never had an exact count. Listen, I, I know how much work, and I make small meetups, and my small meetups are sixty to a hundred people that come. And I mean, it, you know, you and like for example, this one next week starts off. It, this is going to be great. It starts off at Tampa Shave Company, right? Right, where he's got a local store in Tampa. He does hot towel shaves and barbering. And then from there, after everybody's done there, we're going to a restaurant to have lunch and do all our raffles and do our thing. Yep. And then when we're done with that, everyone back to the hotel, dinner, and then to David Doff's cigar lounge oh, till geez. two in the morning. So we got <laughs> like, and that's just that's just Saturday. We have Friday night and Sunday day too. Okay, oh, yeah, yeah. So that's yeah, that's a whole different it's animal, be right? A there, whole too. weekend thing. That's but, a magical but, history tour you got going on. Uh, I know, but that's when I like if no, I. That's great. Come, that's can, great. That's like Chicago. Chicago's like yeah, that. Yeah, I went to the New York meetup, and that was cool. You know, I had to bring my wife and daughter. So, oh, you sorry know, about because that. I had to make a family <laughs> thing out of it. Yeah. Know? No, it can be. Jim, where are you at? Where Where are you? Chad. Chad, I'm sorry. Chad, where are you at? I see big trees behind you. <laughs> He's in the redwood forest. <laughs> he lost his Chad. sound. Oh, Chad, you can't hear us? Can you hear us, Chad? I see, on the chat box, he says he's lost all sound. Uh, oh, he, now we oh, lost we him. We just lost Chad. We oh. lost him, Chad. Jeez. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm going to get a new laptop because I don't like the way I look on this monitor. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, I've tried that. I, I even upgraded to an Apple and uh, yeah. went to the Mac, and it's, 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 it must be me. Okay. Yeah. Apple and Levesque. Christian, you better be ready. But keep going, John. Yeah. I do want to say, yeah, Chicago is a lot like that, too. Chicago, you show up, like, everyone gets there, like, days before, and it, right. it's kind of like the Michael Jackson Beat It video. 
where he's walking down the street and the other guys walk, and more people keep joining in. That's how yeah. it is leading up to the Chicago meetup. But there really is no meetup. Wow. Like, there's no location that we have for right. the official meetup because we're we all hang out at the same bar at the same hotel all week. I mean, during the day we'll go right. and do things here and there, but um, it's just you know the first year we did try to make something happen at the Q Brothers, and uh, I managed to you know reserve a restaurant next door to that. But even that, it was so wishy-washy and a bunch of loose cannons uh, that, yeah, we never try to plan a, an official meetup in Chicago, though we call it the Chicago meetup. It's pretty much Chicago. If you've made it there, you're part of the meetup. Right. Uh, if you can make right. it there, you can make it anywhere. Anywhere. That's, that's what I hear. That's what I hear. Hey, is that is that a, is that a re-release of that soap that's on your chest? That you – I see the shirt. Uh, uh, this is – no, the, it just got released today. That's the that's the new one, right? Yeah, this soap is so good. I had to do a shirt before I actually release the soap. Like, I I I love that you have the shirt because I'm into now buying shirts of everything. So oh, well, John, that, yeah, you should definitely check out my. Soap. I have a whole like merchandise section of. I mean, nice. I have so many shirts right now; it's ridiculous that I'm uh, offering. I'm gonna have to go and look at that. Absolutely, yeah, for sure. It shocked me how popular my shirts were because it never in the past were they ever that popular. I ended up sitting on shirts forever. So it really yeah. wasn't something I mean, something I wanted to do, but not something that was feasible to do. Um, yeah. I just sent you that invite again, by the way. But um, but now, like, yeah, it's it's amazing that people are getting in the shirts. Hey, Christian. Hello. Hello, there everyone. Is. Welcome there to the hot is. seat. Christian, what do I, you think? What, what would be the best day for you when it comes to the Wet Shavers Roundtable? Uh, I voted uh, today, Saturday, uh, only because... Uh, yeah. Saturday is winning. <laughs> yeah, I, I like the Saturday because you can see it live. And if you miss it, then you still have Sunday to possibly view oh, it true. as opposed that's to the true. weekdays, that's which are point. a bit tighter for schedule. So you still get your weekend show live on Saturday, recorded on Sunday, as opposed to, you know, live on Sunday. And then uh, it could be during the week. It all depends. I just centered right. it all around the weekend. That's when it's easier yeah. for me. Uh, I voted in my own interest. <laughs> I, th I think I might well, turn it into an audio gonna podcast, do, I'm sure. that's audio good. podcast to, uh, as well this coming fall. Uh, so, I mean, they'll still be available on YouTube, but also in, in an audio format on like iTunes or, you know, one of those other, uh, actually all of them, typically what I do, all those other platforms. But that's the idea. And I also have it some planned out where I have a calendar of all the different guests throughout the month or the year or six months. You know, just I never could really ever have enough time to, you know, charted it all out before me in the over the past three years it just it was never we were always flying by the seat of our pants so i want to kind of organize it just a little bit more and uh put a little more energy into that just to and then i'll streamline it as well sometimes it's like the week is flying by all these things are coming up and i still haven't set it up on the platform yet because a lot of people don't realize it that this platform we're currently using it takes about an hour to set up each show every week and then do the artwork to flyer you know to, pat, to put all the social media as well I'm not going away. Two seconds. Okay. <laughs> you're right back. Two seconds, John. But uh, yeah, so if I could schedule it in advance, because I could schedule all these on this platform way in advance uh, if I only knew who was going to be the guest and so on and so forth. But so that's what the summer's about, too, is figuring out exactly what, how Sorry, we want to move weird, ahead right? with the show and make it a little more. I don't know. I just feel, I feel like there's a whole other audience out there that we just haven't even tapped into yet. And uh, oh, there's live stuff. Who's that? Is that your dog? This person bring that cake pop. Are you addressing me? Is that on know. your end? Yeah, no, I hear people talking behind everyone. Oh, it's it's uh, my wife and daughter and her friend that just. Oh, uh, that's okay. okay. <laughs> yeah, Huxley doesn't and, speak yet. And and also no, the last I'm, time I was on, my wife fell and made a big thump, and everyone on the show said, "Who made that noise?" Yeah. And I just turned. I said, "Oh, it's my wife. She took a spill, and I didn't move." And I've been living that down ever since. Whenever there's a sound, my wife goes, "Don't worry, it's just me falling. You don't have to move." <laughs> yeah, you could have it. Nice. So she says so she knows I, my priorities. I wanted to ask you guys a question. Um, uh. Have you guys, do you guys, any of you know who um, Brent Jacobson is? Yeah. Yeah. Brent know Jacob Brent. Yep. Okay. So Brent Jacobson recently was out. Yes. He's yeah. an artist. He really is. Oh, uh, yeah. So uh, what I want, I wanted to just show you this. I don't know if you could see it really well. It's this camera sucks. But what this is, is this is a piece of wood that came from King C. Gillette's ranch. Right. I remember when he had that. 
Yeah. So what he what so he did one. was, I guess that one too. Yeah. yeah. That's nice. Yeah. Um, you know, we we were just talking earlier before you came on about, you know, some some guys that are just totally, I mean, they're just blowing us away with their artistic talents as far as artisans go. And, you know, there's listen, there's a million guys out there now that are all soap makers. Everybody, you know, buys a they can all make soap, but doing this, this is a real talent as far as I'm concerned. Hey, soap you is know? a real talent too. <laughs> well, I know, but for you to do it consistently the way you do is what makes you the professional, right. you know? But, you know, there's a lot of guys out there that don't do it consistently. Right, right. You know? Oh, the thing about the King of Gillette Ranch, though, is it, it's just, to everyone else in the world, it's Gillette's Ranch, and it has right. zero to do with shaving. Like, you right. go there into some rich man's, like, land he once owned and dedicated to the state, or gave to the state after he died. Um, but it's just so sad how there's nothing there that's shaving-related, really. Right, right. That's what that's what Brent told me. Yeah. And um, and but he was like when he was out there, his daughter saw this big piece of wood that had fallen from one of the trees. Yeah. And he asked the guy that like they had security people there, I guess, yeah. or park rangers. And he asked them, you know, hey, can I have that? And they said, Yeah, it hit the ground, you can have it. He took it home and he made all these brushes, these handles from King C. Gillette's ranch. So, you know, it's got a story behind it. Like if you're going to shave with a, a Gillette toggle or a Gillette. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, no, you know? I think it's really cool. I wish they would uh, incorporate some shaving stuff over at Kings and Gillette's Ranch. Uh, but again, like yeah. they give tours and whatnot there. That's so removed from um, from Gillette, as we know it. It's just right. like, you know, where I grew up, there was Newport Mansions and you had like the Breakers, which were was owned by the Vanderbilts. But like. It's just a big rich man's mansion. Like you don't know any of the history or where the money came or anything like that. And I think you have the same right. thing happen with King C. Gillette's Ranch. Um, we did an episode of the Mustache and Blade podcast where Ryan took a tour of it. And he knew more about what was going on with the Gillette history than the guy giving the tour. So it was kind of, right. uh, and, you know, and he kept saying, yeah, like, you should talk to Razor Bloom. Yeah, it does happen. And like, and I think you're missing a, a crucial part of a uh, a tour or, as a tour guide or the history when right. you don't cover that end of like where did how is this possible you know like well yeah. this is which is even more an interesting story than the actual yeah. mansion you're walking around you know absolutely uh, absolutely and i must throw in really quick when you're talking about this that you know i if there's a show on that i watch once a week at work i even listen to it at work with my headphones on in, with my phone in my back pocket, and then I watch it later when I can see it. But I lather be shaving oh. is so entertaining, and you guys also really have a lot of information out there. You, I mean, you don't just talk about this is a black beauty. You go into the story of every little intricate detail about these things. Yeah, I love that. I really did. Well, thank I you. send people to go watch that. Oh, you know? good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank yeah. <laughs> you. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the two guys that are above us, that are right here above us, those two guys, those two, yeah, those two guys are like, they're the main two guys. If you want to know anything about wet shaving, that's where you look. Well, you know? I don't know. Mantic is the yeah, guy. No, mm -hmm. I don't. I don't listen to what anybody else listen. Mantic uh, is the guy. I've just. Uh, Man, I, I'm yeah, sitting at his heels, uh, trying to take yep. in. Something. You want to learn how to sh listen? You know, it's going to be fun. Um, there's guys that I go to. My go-to guys when I want to learn something or know something, and you know, we always tell the new guy, we always these newbie guy. We always tell the newbie guy, hey, you want to learn how to straight razor shave? Go to this guy or this guy or this guy or you know, start off with this razor. So everybody, there's a million of us out there on YouTube and Facebook that have an answer for everything. Yep. But like tomorrow, tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. in my group, I'm doing a live duo shave with the stallion. And he taught me how to shave with a straight razor. So I, I, everybody sees me shave. And on YouTube, I have a couple of hundred videos up there. And Everyone they would comment, you shave just like Anthony Esposito. That's because <laughs> that's where I learned how to shave with a straight razor, watching over and over in my shave den. Well, yeah, you know, he's a good person to so, watch. Especially yeah. the, so that's you know, you bring up an interesting thing. The, the whole Facebook Live thing, now you can share this the screen with someone else. 
Yeah. I haven't done yeah. that yet. How easy is that? It's it's very easy. All you got to do is just like you did here with me. Invite them. Is you know uh, yeah you invite them and uh, you swipe your phone to the left and it'll have a little camera in the corner of their picture and if they can go live and you just click on them and you invite them and they can join in on it and it's side by side you can only do two that's people. fine that's fine but you know you get two guys and then you're talking to each other and also answering questions so it's it's a really great format for uh for you know the facebook group yeah you know I the only great. thing that i hate about that is you can't like I can't. I'm not going live on John Romanov, so 800 of my non-shaving friends right. watch me shave for 20 <laughs> minutes. You know, uh, yeah. so if I do it, I do it in in a particular group, in the Shavette group. You know, or I'll go live in South Florida Wet Shavers, or or you know, Badger and Blade, one of them groups. You know. Yeah, but, no, that uh, makes sense. That's why. That's why I have the Douglas Smythe, my own personal channel, is Douglas Smythe. It's only shaving stuff because right. you're right. Well, my mother will pop in here and there, but I mean, for the most yeah. part, it's just uh, I know who I'm dealing with. If I used my uh, my my street name in another, sh I, I couldn't do shaving on that. People wouldn't get it. Uh, they'd put me away. So right. uh, people are understanding more and more why Douglas Smythe exists as he does because for these reasons. Um, yeah. But no, it's so true. And that's really cool. Though. What, what's going on with Facebook, with the double live feeds. I love that. Yeah. The YouTube live stuff that's happening. Like this is the future. Uh, I love it. I, I just talked to Luke Webster recently said to uh, Matt oh. Pasarsic that YouTube is dead, <laughs> which I really? don't think it is dead. But I think there is, you know, these live things are you're catching more traffic with the live videos, I think, nowadays. Um, yeah. I don't know well, why that two is. Guys, you and me both have mustache and goatees. <laughs> and you two guys are both clean shaven. And like, like which one before. of these? I, I saw that Christian. You just shaved your mustache off recently. Oh, Christian. Yeah, it was in early in May. I shaved it. In early May. Yeah, and uh, it's six months that. on, six months off, and uh, this. <laughs> I see Douglas shaking his head, but uh, I, I really like clean shaven, and I really like having a mustache. I can't have both, so <laughs> no, no, that's fine. That's I, fine. I, I figured think there's something know. out, so I figured six on, six off is cool, and I think my next six months on it might be a beard. So uh, my wife has sort of dared me, and daring me is dangerous for anyone who does that because I will do it. So. <laughs> I just want to see Mantic with a beard. I, I just Not want happening. one picture. <laughs> Not happening. Uh, uh, the 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 young yeah. lady, the young lady who got me into this in the first place, uh, is is not going to go there. And oh, I can't man. I can't blame her. Uh, she did put up with me uh, a year or so ago for uh, Movember. I did grow a mustache for right, November, right. but uh, she said last day of the month. That's out of here. So no, that's uh, not yeah. gonna happen. I just want you to Although if I if I did going. if I did a shave with just a uh, just a straight razor, I can see why you would leave this uh, unshaved. Of course, and yeah. just, I even keep cutting mine down. I I mean I'm keeping the mustache, and it's a challenge to straight razor shave around it a little mm -hmm. bit. But and then the goatee, I I started off wide, and it's getting thinner and thinner. Eventually, it'll go away. Yeah. But I I wanted to ask Christian a question. Well, two actually. What what is your go to razor that you like? Find that you you go to all the time, and what are like what is the scents that you like best? What kind of soap scents do you enjoy most? Wow. <laughs> well, in terms of uh, razors, I'm still on a journey of discovery, so uh, I'm still you know trying out different razors. And then what I've done to in order to manage the decision making for for kits is. Uh, right now, what I do is I change my soap and aftershave uh, every th third shave. So uh, I used to just shave, uh, change my entire kit every two weeks, but I had so many soaps that I hadn't tried yet that I were they were there for two years. It's embarrassing. So, you know, I have to kind of battle my hoarding habits and just say, at least I can say I can, I've tried them all. So right. what I've been doing now is two soaps, two aftershaves a week. And the brush and razor I've been keeping um, every two weeks uh, and just changing it every two weeks. And right now I've been uh, – this week I've been using my uh, – well, actually, Douglas brought his out that he bought this week. Uh, that's about it. 
Oh yeah. What was that? The, was that the micromatic? That's, that's my uh, yeah. uh, micromatic gym open calm. And the way I feel about it after six shaves is this is the best razor I've ever used. <laughs> but last week I used the uh, Alpha Ecliptic, and I said, "Well, that's a top five razor." Uh, and two weeks before that, I used a charcoal good razor, and that was also a top. That was a top three <laughs> razor. Yeah, I've got like tough. I've got like thirty razors in that I can use uh, as I want, and I, it's it's too much. I can't find you know, and I'm rating them all a five. Uh, so I have a scale. Right. I have a, an Excel spreadsheet that I've been keeping track of all my shaves since July two thousand fourteen. Every element Good has luck. been rated. Yeah. Good luck. I, it's a lot like working at a sub shop in a college town, and you just every girl that comes in, you fall in love with. You know, you just like it's. So, so it's hard to say what's my best razor. What I do know is that I love single edge razors. I think I'm leaning towards single edge razors big time. Um, right. I love straight razor shaving, but I don't strop well. So it, they constantly need to be honed, and I need to mail it out. Believe it or not, living in Los Angeles, I need to mail out my razors to get honed, uh, and it's not that that's turned way too expensive. Uh, I love double edge razors, slant, open comb. Uh, you know, why do you drop them off at Old Town? They have a service. Really? Because I've I've actually contacted Damon and asked for input, and he really? couldn't give me any names. <laughs> David, David Gonzalez, Gonzalez? Da yeah, David Gonzalez set up a, a whole like thing at the at oh, uh, Old sure. Town where you can send. Yeah, so talk to David. I I, I don't da <laughs> Damon. I love Damon, but sometimes he doesn't even know what's going on in his own shop. Okay, well, I can contact him. Yeah, because I have four really nice straight razors that and a kamisori that I'd love to have honed uh, without nice. having to pay the extra uh, money shipping for shipping. Fee. And what I'm more sure. worried about is shipping is losing the package. That's what yes, I'm more right. worried about. I don't mind 15 bucks. I really do mind biting my nails for the next week, wondering if it's, it's going to come back or not, or even reach its destination. And so yeah. and that's the razor sec, uh, answer. For the soaps, it's still a discovery as well. I'll give you an example. I could not stand lavender. I couldn't stand patchouli. I hated it. Now I have a couple of lavender soaps that are pure lavender. I have Douglas's Planet Lavender. I also have... Um, <laughs> Yeah, I, I love life grooming department. He has a lavender soap as well. It's really nice. It's got. It's also got a lavender absolute in there. Yes. Five different varieties. Uh, I think Douglas has six in his. So I love lavender now. So uh, I discovered um, leather as a single note. I always it would always be mentioned in soaps, but I could never pick it up. Now I can. Uh, patchouli. I'm getting into that to the point where I could almost wear that as a Straight. pure scent. Not even Ooh. as an accord to help. So right. uh, I think Dr. John's put me uh, far along on that road because he's got some patchouli mix in his uh, soaps uh, quite a bit uh, with his sandalwood and all that. So uh, it's really difficult to describe my favorite scents. Uh, I do know that right now, I must say, Alfin and Malbolge, uh, both PA products, are probably my top, top, top soaps in terms of performance and scent. And in terms of percent alone, they, they're there too. Um, so it, I have a really hard time because once again, like what have I tried in the last month? I love all of these, you know? So yeah, uh, it's really, I'm still on a road to discovery. It's a little discouraging because the variety is so large. I, I don't think I'll ever reach my uh, knowledge base. <laughs> I, understand. I understand, you know, my yeah. wife, she's luckily in another room. <laughs> you know, but I mean, literally, locked up I in have, the other room. <laughs> yeah, I have, I, I have a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff. I got a, <laughs> a storeroom and my office behind me, and then in the same end, it's everywhere. But um, one, one single edge razor that I just recently, uh, I got from like eBay and restored it was the Gem Damascene. Has anybody shaved with that? No. The Gem Damascene, really nice. Gem Damascene. Damascene. Yeah, this is the Gem Damascene. Hold and, it up, John. Uh, Hold that looks like a 1912, doesn't it? That looks like oh, okay. a gem. Okay. It says Damascene in it. It's uh, it, it's very nice. 
I, I, I mean, do have that one. I didn't. Know I, the I think I did have, have that one too. So my yeah. first one I bought from Tim Blim actually uh, a year ago. Yeah, there's a, a bunch of different versions, like the Gem Junior and the, all these sure. other gems. Yeah. The, but the Damascene, for some reason, the way the the blade sits on on these little hooks that over here. Yeah. Lather um, catcher. Oh my God, man! It's like smooth like butter. Yeah. It really is. I I was surprised, and I like when I'm going to vintage, I find myself. If I'm not grabbing a you know a Gillette, I'll grab the the Damascene, and uh, it's even one that you want to take on trips with you. Yeah, you well, know? ladder catcher. That's one of the oldest. Uh, how would you say this? Uh, development in um, safety razors. Those ladder yeah. catchers were the first, the first original uh, safety razors before Gillette. Those little yeah. those little cages, you know, yeah. like that, and they, they are really cool. And that's the way you'd have to do it with a single edge, uh, with a yeah, with a single edge razor, anyways. Yeah, they look, they look. I mean, this is a Damascene, and this is a Gem Junior. Okay. And yeah. they look almost. I don't know if you could see. They they look very similar. The Damascene has a a um the round knurling handle, uh, where okay. this one is octagonal or hexagonal. But, yeah. Yeah. Ex yeah. But um, as far as the uh, the inside, I don't know if you could see, but the damascene actually says damascene in it. Okay. Yeah. But, I don't know if I've ever yeah. looked. I'd have to yeah. check mine. But, yeah, I do have yeah, this, this open comb micromatic gem this week. And I just think that right. the engineering with the way that the arm, this thing moves, it is it's yeah. gold, man. You can't get <laughs> yeah. a machine to do it that smoothly. It is yeah. rocks. And it feels like it's very substantial in hand. Oh. Like it's it's very steampunk. It is, yeah, uh, yeah, it is beautiful. It is. It's fine. It it's is. Got, yeah. got enough artwork on it to, to say, okay, it's not just plain minimalistic no. nothing. It's got something. Yeah, no, I really I love these. I have another one of these too. Uh yeah. And uh they really you know, and I I didn't just didn't get into them right away because that fixed angle was always so you know, it just it was such a weird angle to, to learn. I wasn't learning it as quick as I wanted to, and the blade was a lot stiffer than the DE I was used to. That just put me off for a long time, and there were so many cool DEs to, uh, you know, to try. But now getting back to them, now that I'm trying to develop a single edge of my own, um, I'm starting to you know, revisit them, and I think we all are. I think all of us, like, for the last five years, have been really excited about DE blades and DE razors that yeah, were coming I, to these like last, you know, to the single edge. Now, now we're all, like... You know, finally, yep. they may have been in our collection, but we weren't really using them that much. Yeah. And now we're all turning back to them. Yeah. Okay. There you is were talking. Um, uh, you were talking about a shit Krona. I got this beautiful shit Krona. You know, and these these are like, they're like the coolest vintagey things. <laughs> but this one, this one, I got this. This is a Dunlop. Durham. Yeah, Durham. This is a, a Durham rather Durham yeah. Dunlop. Yeah. Or what, wow. I, and. Yeah, this one is. I Show the this. handle. The handle is what I really like. That's what I based the uh, Neo. Hold it up. Yeah, there it is. The Neo Victorian handle that I'm now, I just put out. Uh, yeah, it's I really cool. Really based it on that. I I didn't know that existed until someone said, "Hey, you're redoing it." It's like, oh. Uh, yeah, but, but yeah. it uses this super long blade, and uh, it's really thick. Yeah, it's so, like a rug cutter, like a rug yeah. cutting blade. It really yeah. is. I, I think yeah. they actually fit in there. Yeah, uh, I've I've shaved with everything. I make a rule that I won't buy anything I can't shave with. So if it's if and if I buy something and I can't restore it to shave with it, or even like the seagull, you guys did a uh, a show on the seagull razor. You yeah. did Douglas. Yep. yep. And then I bought a beautiful beautiful seagull with the box. I restored it. I bought the blades. I went online. Um, I took your template down. Oh, I good. bought the the scissors that you told everything. And it gave me a great shave. I mean, it's just okay. a pain in the ass to make the blades, you know? You get but, so used to it, though. Once you start doing it, once you've done yeah. 10, it's so easy. And it's what's funny is, like, since I did that – I did that video probably about, like, four years ago now. I know. But I've read in other forums, people like, yeah, you can modify them using cuticle scissors and da-da-da. And I, like, I went through so many different scissors before I landed on cuticle scissors. But so people are, like, spreading – the way I do it around, but then I'm not getting any credit for it. Not that I'm looking for any, but it's just funny yeah. to see that it's, it's caught on finally. Yeah, like I, I love this razor. This is what, and, oh, and yeah. I, and I, I've got like the original blades that came with it. Oh yeah. You know, no, it's, box. it's a work of art. Yeah. I mean, only a locksmith or a watchmaker could invent something. So, I mean, look at that. That's it's beautiful. Just, That's yeah. beautiful. I, I'm serious. I cannot believe. And, and you know, a couple of the other guys that I know, they were like, they bought the Siegel razor too. Yeah. And they were all excited, and no one can shave with them because they, they get five seconds into trying to cut a blade, 
to fit it and they lose their patience. Oh, really? Yeah. And they're oh, like, it's totally it. worth it. This is one of the best razor yeah. shavers of all time. I, I've got yeah. nothing but the best shaves yeah. with it. So what blades do you use to make your blades for the seagull? Astra. You have a specific, Astra? Yeah. Astra and feathers of what I've used in okay. the past. And I just made, when I, I first started doing it, I made so many, like I was just watching TV right. and just kept making them that I still, to this day, you know, years after have them already right. cut. So, I mean, if I get back yeah. to it, I'm literally going to be rusty at doing it. No pun intended, yeah. but, um, but yeah, it's really super simple to do. Once you start doing it, it's like anything else. You just get, you know, and it doesn't have to be perfect uh, right. cut. It just has to fit in that razor and you can adjust it if you need to. But I mean, like yep. using the seagull, there's nothing that shaves as close. Yeah. As that. I bought the, uh, the scissors that you told me yeah. about. And yeah. Go, yeah. Listen, I pay attention. I really do. <laughs> Good. Know? Because I, I did the work. Yeah. I bought so many different you did. scissors I appreciate for that, that one. Uh, I really went to town because I, I wanted to. I want well, actually, you know, I even looked into making punches. The uh, oh, having yeah? a company that makes hole punches, right. I wanted them to make uh, blade punches. I mean, honestly, if it was just that shape, it would work. Right, punch a de blade, but to, I, the the minimum amount of them, they wanted me to buy like a thousand of them before they were even considered doing oh. it. Uh, and it's like, am I going to really be able to sell these or give them? Right. I can afford to do this anyways. So I didn't, but that would be. The way to do it, you know, it would yeah. be great because everyone would just they'd start using them again. You just fit it yeah. right in the, the punch, push it down. It'd be the same cut every time. That would uh, be very cool. I did I I started off my endeavor with that razor with a Dorco Prime. And I tried it with the Dorco Prime. I don't and, like Dorco. You know, I did the first so I tried it with it. I did the first blade, and for some reason. I just couldn't couldn't get the blade to fit right, right the way I was cutting it. So then I looked at the actual the the, the guts of the blade. You know what I mean? The opening that's yeah. in there. Yep. And and I said, well, let me see if I could find something that resembles the seagull a little better. And then I I found the persona red, and boom, six in a row cut just like this. Yeah. The blade is a little thinner, I think. The persona it could red. Be. The, the the blade was thinner than the Dorco, so it was easier to get around those, you know, with the scissors. It could be because there are some cheap Chinese blades that I noticed are actually thinner too, where they flick. Yeah. They like flick. They actually give me a rash if the if the blade is too yeah. thin. I don't know what it is, but it like it, I can feel the difference. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, it, it agitates my skin. It's really weird. But you know, Have I you just want to hop back to that Durham uh, Dunlop yeah. razor. I yeah. also, I think they still make those blades, John, in England. I, I actually have Persona Medical. Um, the ones that I bought are yeah. from Persona, and they're like I get a pack of thirty of them for thirty dollars. They're a buck a piece. Oh, okay. Six dollars shipping, but they're surgical steel. They're made like for I guess to do uh, cuts. Put in your yeah. cuts and stuff. Yeah, but um, one of the guys in one of the forums hooked me up with them. And he sent me two of them to try. Yeah. And I, I was shaving with the actual shavette. Right, know, right. The double sided. Yeah. The and then when I found this, I bought two of these at the same time. And I, I was like, I really want the blade. And uh, uh, one of the guys, uh, Jeff, I think it's Jeff Adams. I'm not, I can't remember right now. But but anyway, it's that's persona? where I got. So it's persona, persona makes them. And what yeah. are they called? Um, th they're surgical hold on I'm, I'm coming i'm just grabbing my uh blade bank oh jeez so that well, I there's a pause you. here i i do need to run guys i'm sorry uh, i've got a no something coming up i've got a sorry it got really interesting man yeah i, I, I had to go over it <laughs> sorry but uh we'll 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 we will catch everybody later y'all have right a good on. night and so uh we will see you soon like after this. After I'm Thank back. You, Take care. Hey, it was Ciao. great talking to you, man. Take care. And they, they come sealed, and they're they're persona surgical. They're That's what they call it. Persona surgical. Yeah, persona okay, surgical. Have it, folks. I'd rather yeah. use them than uh the. Oh, of the course, girls. of course, you know. But and also, you make, Wade and Butcher, Wade and Butcher made the similar. Uh, they have a similar handle to that one because that's right when they joined forces with Durham back in the day. I tried to buy that Wade and Butcher. It went on Shave Gear Raffle, but I lost it. Uh, but I saw one, that, and they're really hard to find. No, I agree. Okay. Because, yeah, I, I like the single-edge blades because they are thicker. 
And I actually suspect that it's the razor blades in even in uh, double edged razors that might leave my skin a bit sensitive, no matter what kind of light touch versus a single edge blade. I, I think the blade is thicker. It doesn't move. It just goes and cuts as opposed to a moving blade, which might vibrate and chip into your skin when it comes yeah. back. The chatter. And, yeah. And that chatter might yeah. uh, be the cause of the bit of heat that you get after a shave versus a hard right. friggin' blade that says, you know what? I'm not taking gut from you. I'm chopping you, you know? Yeah. These are, these yeah. are persona hair shaper blades. Um, I, I recently got it. I bought a bunch of WEC razors, mm -hmm. WEC hair shapers. Um, but the Sexto blade, the WEC Sexto blade from 1921, which was the original one they came out with, is the most like a straight razor. Um, thickness and weight. The scales are the same size as a full-size straight razor. And they use these full-size blades. And they're thick. And they're just amazing to shave with. When you break this out, it's like shaving with a straight razor. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know if you could see this. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's what that's what you're using in the Durham. No, I'm using oh. those surgical ones. Okay, this okay. is in the WEC version, but WEC has this uh, this type of so like as far as like uh, using uh, single edge blades. Right. You know. I like to use the single edge blades and I'm finding that like the personas, both of these are personas and persona seems to make really nice single edge blades. Oh, they're, yeah. they're surgical. They're really nice. Yeah. Have you, um, have you seen Gillette has a new, uh, they're making blades in Brazil, DE blades. Mm -hmm. Yep. I, I just picked up like a five or six. Um, somebody had given me one. But they're like they say made in Brazil on them and everything. Yep. Now there's a. They, I mean they have they they had a comp, they had a factory in Brazil for a while. Oh, I didn't know that. All around the world they've had factories for making blades. Some of them these factories are still open. Some they sold to Lord. Um, but yeah, no, for because I mean they had international patents, mm -hmm. so it was cheaper for them to have their blades in the countries they were selling stuff in as well. So yeah, the, in fact that's why a lot of these companies that still making blades like there's, all, there's you know, thousands of them still making blades they inherited a lot of the gillette gear and equipment right um so guys we have a seat open by the way too if someone's i'm gonna do we're gonna do go on for another five minutes so if anyone wants to take that fourth seat it's open cool. but Christian, um, what do you what blades do you like i've been using all sorts uh i'm uh i i like a G gillette silver blue money down on the table i never have a mistake with that that's rock solid yeah. they always work really well uh, I tried that Balzano on the Alpha Ecliptic. I, that Ooh. didn't mess around. No. <laughs> I like that. That's like uh, feathers, like mature brother. Yeah. Really, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, it was. It, I, I loved experimenting with that, and it was a. There was a wee bit of heat at the end, but I'm sure that if I stuck with it for more than three consecutive shaves, I would nail it down. They, so. They'll last longer. They last longer than feathers, I find. Oh, the Balzano. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Because I tried yeah. a Dorco, and uh, that was a lot of pain. After, yeah, after I don't the like shave, Dorco. It was super sharp. It was too sharp almost. And then the second and third shave was like, what's going on here? Am I even cutting anything? Right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's cutting in my skin and not my hairs. <laughs> yeah. I don't like Dorcos. I feel – and you know what? Dorcos, I don't think many people took them serious. But what happened oh. is like three years ago when the Micro Touch came out and brought in a whole new wave of wet shavers, Dorcos came with that razor. And that's the only way I think Dorco was going to ever sell those razors is by putting them in with like something that was popular. And right. so I think that was a lot of people's introduction to Dorco. Oh, I, you know, I always get Dorcos and I was like, I, well, I actually tried I found to out about them through my barber. He was using them to do a hot towel shave in his shavette. And uh, he was like, here, take a pack home and try it. And I was like, okay, the regular Dorco and then there's the Dorco Prime. And the Dorco Prime I liked. But again, I don't shave enough with a DE for me to be like the guy that says, oh, buy these, you know what I mean? Or buy these. I, I like uh, Voshkod. I like uh, um, Platinum Reds, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Persona Reds. But I, I mainly am a straight razor guy, so I stay away from trying to give advice as far as DEs go because sure. I, I have a big collection of DEs, but I'm not really shaving with them on a regular basis. Yeah. There's and the thing is – he shaves with DEs on a regular basis. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Yeah. Now the thing with uh, blades is it's going to be different for everybody. But no, I yeah. haven't tried Dorco Primes though. Chad's asked me if I've tried Dorco mm -hmm. Primes. I have not. I wrote Dorco off such a long time ago that I haven't gotten back, and that's probably unfair of me. <laughs> and I, I, are those? That's what they. Oh, yeah. Okay. So the Prime stands yeah. out more than Dorco. Yeah, and the Prime is yeah. a little bit sharper. It's a little bit smoother. Um, I, I did a you know a comparison where I had uh, my two exact same razors, blade versus blade. And uh, compare them. Yeah, and there's not Actually, a huge difference, but uh, you know, there's d a definite difference with the prime. So you may find that the prime works for you. Okay, I'm gonna give them a chance again. Thanks to you guys. There you go. And I mean, you know, if you're putting it in something, uh, you know, that's adjustable, where you could, you know, set it up so it's a little milder shave just in case, or it's a more aggressive shave. How you know? do adjustables? Adjustables are not. I know. Another I, thing. I know you don't. Yeah. <laughs> you don't do. Uh, yeah. So now you're giving me a Dorco and a Justable Sorry. Jar. <laughs> I'm going to have to send you some stuff here, yeah. you know? But, you know, maybe it's high time. Maybe I, if I'm going to do it, I might as well just jump in all the way here and really. Yeah, yeah. That's, the tables that's have turned. Right. Make it in a mirror, too, so I can just, all my phobias, I can just get over yeah. it while getting dental work done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look at you. You got, you're all shaved off, too, man. You got all shaved. Me? Yeah. yeah. Wow. And I actually, I did. I don't know if anyone's noticed. I took down my mustache a little bit. It's not I did, and, and this uh, the handlebar thing on the side is trimmed up nicely. Where yeah, actually, I, last week I was kind of shaving. I just had the the goatee or yeah. the goat here going on, and uh, the I had a Van Dyke going on. But I definitely took down the handlebars. It's more like your length right now, John. If I had some wax in it, which I don't, right, right. But it's it's good to do every now and then, you know. I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna grow it out for about four or five more months. Oh yeah, then, keep going. During Christmas, I want to hang ornaments on it, you know, to take my Christmas <laughs> picture or something. Yeah, you get the Barbie, Barbie yeah. size ornaments. The Jewish guy with Christmas ornaments. Yeah, you know? <laughs> kind of weird thing going on. Exactly. exactly. Happy Harry Hanukkah. That's what. Yeah, <laughs> for sure, for sure. Do you uh, uh, do you have anything new coming out, Aaron? Uh, that you I know you're building some new stuff. Every time I turn around, you got. Some kind of new cool feature coming out. He's on inspired. He's on fire right now. Don't even question. <laughs> he just got over it. the flu. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So most of the time, that's because you know somebody says, "Hey, can you build me an insert for my um, injector?" You know, from a right. chick injector. So that's the thing that that I just came out with. I did one for that with the uh, the injector blade holder. You know, fits down yeah. in there as well. That, that injector is just long enough that ah. it won't quite fit into the Altoids tin, so we had to go to the bigger one but that fits the d and the e and then nice. uh, let's see what else did i just do you, you have some kind of thing that you created for uh putting your soap labels up straight right so yeah so the, the, the i saw that soap couch so i i i'm redoing my den and uh, i decided i want all my soaps to, to fit so that the label faces me so i'm uh -huh. looking at the top of it and uh, <clears throat> I wanted it to look nice as well because, you know, I could just cut a board and cut some V-grooves in it and do it that way. But uh, yeah. that's not quite as stable. So what I did is I started des designing it um, and uh, was fiddling around and it ended up coming out looking like a kind of like a couch. So I call it the soap couch. Soap couch. So I just, yes, just did a, a new version last night where uh, somebody asked me uh, they wanted to be able to space them. Right. And have spacers in between so that you would have everything spaced out perfectly. So I did that. They're keyed, uh, basically dovetailed in uh, extra pieces oh, nice. that you can put in. And then you create a wall of uh, shape soaps. Yeah, that's cool. Because I know a lot of my buddies, they have like a soap and then next to it, they have the aftershave. That's the next. And thing. then a soap and an aftershave, you know, so you can have like even when you're traveling, you know, you could like have a, a holder so you have your soap and your aftershave there because i know i'm a bit i'm a photographer i love when i travel taking pictures of what i'm shaving with yeah to yeah. throw up on facebook you know and i'm not bringing a big rig to set up you know to take a picture but something really cool to do that like i know you just redid your um your star wars handle thing to hold a bigger uh brush and I, I've been yeah. watching you. You've been making a lot of adjustments. <laughs> yeah. And it's for the good. It is. You know? Yeah. It's so very cool so tonight, doing. actually, I was already planning on um, – that's the next thing is to do the – so that you've got your bottle of aftershave next to your soap. And right. then for, for those of us that, uh, you know, like to do the full setup. 
Right. Yeah. I, we. I got some anal buddies at, oh, here. Yeah, I know. I've seen their uh, their dance. Yeah. There's. Yeah. I mean, and, uh, you know, I got Tim Zub yeah, in oh, yeah. my group. He's a master carpenter, and you know, we have people that are buying shave ends made by him. And he right. custom makes the wood shelving and fits it to your bathroom. And, you know, I, I, me, I go to Ikea and I buy, you know, picture frame shelving. And yes. I yes. slap everything up there. See, but, my, my collection is always growing and changing. That I need something modular. And yeah. That's, yeah. Uh, that's what I built. Uh, if you haven't watched my, my stupidly long uh, shaved-in tour, my main shelf setup yeah. is modular. Okay. Put a, do you have a link to it? You can stick in the sidebar can, over here. I can grab one here in a second. So I'll be looking at a different but way. But yeah, modular is definitely something that, you know, yeah. I think a lot of us can use as, as I mean, our collections are never, it's not static. It's, no. They're all growing, if anything. And, uh, for sure. You know, my bathroom, you know, I bought this great display case for my new bathroom. And it's not big enough. I thought it was, I thought it was pretty big. It's not big enough. It's, right. it's, and I got stuff jammed in there. It's not even a pleasure to look upon because it's yeah. just stuff jammed in there. And so most of my collection is in drawers now. And right. it's like, I need something to put it on, you know? And, yeah. I have the same thing. I have 99% of my stuff is in plastic three-drawer buckets all yeah. over, everywhere, under the tables. They're everywhere. My soaps are uh, – I, I keep them separated by – you know um, who the maker is, so that at right. least when I want to get a soap from uh, Uncle John's or PAA or whoever, you know, um, I can separate them by the drawers. Um, Good. But, Otherwise, they'll fight. Oh, they do. <laughs> they do fight. They're like they're like Siamese fighting fish. Or yeah, you got to keep them separated. Put them two of them together, and they start killing each other. Yeah, keep the sure. blades away from there. Yeah, that's yeah. why I, I got them. All the blades are in like separate. They're there all separated. Go. Yeah. So they can't touch. Is that a tackle box? What is that? That yeah. is. It's a it's a four dollar tackle box. Yeah. That I got smart. at Bass Pro Shop, and yeah. this thing holds hundreds and hundreds of blades. Wow. You know. That is cool. That's a see. That's a good video you need to make on how Dude, to store your I blades. Mean, you did, listen, your hacks are. Uh, listen, I could I could I don't know, blow stuff up your thing all day, but buy one of these and say it's your idea. I'm good with that. <laughs> no, okay? I'll give you credit for it. Here, okay. Anyone that wants to hack, I'll, I'll give them credit. For Here, here's an add-on to that tackle box. Put your those desiccant packets in there to make sure your blades stay as dry as possible. Yeah, I've been, yeah, I collect like those. Idea. And my the box that I hold the blades in is it's it's half blades, half. I think Silica. they're called yeah, the desiccant. Silica. Yeah. Douglas uh, and I don't have to worry about that. Yeah, that's no. right. <laughs> yeah. You guys have like hundred holders, right? You make those. Yeah, they stick on the wall and they yeah. hold yeah. hundreds at a time. I yeah. ended up a couple of months ago at IKEA buying. It's a new line of uh, cabinets. They're called Fabricor. What's really okay. cool is the walls are all glass. The shelves are glass, but the corner frames and everything is rounded metal. It looks like a 1940s, 50s military kind of a setup, except it's all glass. Looks really cool, and there's two versions. There's one that's just a tent, uh, a tall, uh, same width, same depth uh, shelf. But I bought one that's like double wide. And when I bought it, I had a little bit of space in it. In the last two months, I killed off all the space. <laughs> so yeah. I'm gonna have to buy a second one, or I don't know what. Yeah. I have to stop accumulating. I, but I cannot resist this, some of the stuff that comes out. I know. I know. That's, That's how it was. When we the interior video of mine was yeah. a year and a half ago. I overflowed it two weeks after I made that video. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's what happens. You just can't, if I had my own bathroom, I don't. I don't even want to imagine what a, you know how much yeah. money would leak out of this house to fill that bathroom. <laughs> oh my goodness! And I, with me, what happened was my daughter went away to college, to UCF, and when she left the house. I took her bathroom yeah. <laughs> and I made a shave den out of it yeah. and then expecting she's never going to come back. And, and then two years later she's back and yeah. she's going to uh, Nova university. Um, and she wants to, she's like, what am I supposed to do? I said, you share a bathroom with mom now. I don't know what to tell you. You know? But this my, is attached to my bedroom. <laughs> yeah. You can't even take a shower in there. I got yeah. things in the shower. You know, oh, yeah. Curtain. It's actually a closet. Open no the curtain. And it's all shelving. Yeah. There's yeah. no room in there for anything. Yeah. yeah. It, it but, get bad. Yeah, of course we can, you know. 
But this is and and I, I always laugh because I I see all these people they're posting like, oh, you know, this we got into this to save money. I didn't get into it to save no, money. No, I didn't either. Yeah. It's a hobby. Yeah, it's a hobby. I got into this because I wanted something to do. Um, you know, my dad was a wet shaver, and um, you know, he passed down his straight razor and and his his Gillette, and I was like, you know, this is I want to continue doing this. And when my dad passed away, um, it's been what twelve years since I like full blown, you know, wet shaving, you know, with the brushes and the whole deal. Yeah. So. You know, it's been. I mean, I shaved before. Yeah, everybody shaved with the cartridges and yeah. and the goo. You know. Yeah. But you know, this has been like a, a mind altering. My wife set, tell tells me that this has taken over my whole life. <laughs> it's like all shaving. consuming. It's it's all consuming. And then to make matters worse, I'm like an admin in three groups. Yeah. And and the South Florida wet shavers is these. I literally have guys coming over to my house. At least once a week to shave in my den. <laughs> want lessons? How do you do this? How do you do that? Yeah. You know, how do you build a lather? No. You know? It happens, and that's the th you know you you bring up another good point that uh there are a bunch of different types in the forums. There are guys that got into it to sh to shave money, and there's right. other ones that whether they know it or not, they're hobbyists. So you have the right. ones that came in to shave money, saying like, I need to take a freeze right now, or yeah. I saw someone posted like the three levels: like you get into it, then you start collecting, you overboard, then you stop, and it's like yeah, well, for you fine. for your type. <laughs> That's that's what it is. But for our type or my type or you and me, John, yeah. we're collectors. We're in it for the long Absolutely. haul. Like I don't plan on stopping or freezing anytime soon. That's no. not part of my. I'll do my, a, a my freeze, budget. but it's only so I can pay down the credit card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear you. We're gonna bring them back you. up again. But I mean, like I, like I I have I have a big cabinet behind me that I have all my vintage stuff in. Yeah, you know, and yeah. I'm I'm probably in in the couple of hundreds with razors. Oh, sure. Now, sure, you know. And brushes, I've got uh, about a hundred brushes, yeah. and I've completely gone away from buying, uh, you know, Simpsons and stuff like that. I buy, you know, Leo Freelt and yeah. you know, Brent Jacobson. I want if I'm going to spend a hundred, two hundred on something, I want it handmade for me by somebody. Yeah. Custom, you know. And, uh, so I think exactly. that's good though for noobs though. They need to identify what which one they are. Because you yeah. have some people arguing, you know, they're, they're, they're never, no one's ever going to win the argument because it's two different camps arguing, and right. they don't realize there's any difference. But there is when it's like, you know, you're wasting your money. There's someone telling you you're wasting your money. Yeah. Not, like I grew up collecting stuff, coins, right. stamps, and I think a lot of us, you know, the, that I mean, it's like, it's like the only place we really have control in our lives is with right. these hobbies, you know, putting together these collections and whatnot. So they appeal to people like us. That part of the the hobby does, anyways. But they, we're also talking right. people that just want. To save uh, save some money and shave, but also talk right. about it. But like we just, it's tough identifying who are who until they finally po make those posts. And it's like, okay, yeah. you're one of them, but you're pissing yeah. in my picnic because I just love collecting. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I would dare I say those that want to save money are probably not highly active in the forums because it totally goes right. against it. The forums are nothing but steroids for buying. Or yeah, yeah. Really it's, it's, those yeah. people will get sucked into it. And yeah. like, we're I amazing with a good yeah. thing at the beginning, but to, yeah. to, for all of us involved to getting, sucking those people in are the wrong, those are the people, the ones that are going to piss in your picnic. They yeah. really are. Uh, I want to make a shirt that says cartridge raises will save you money. <laughs> Rob. Yeah, really well. <laughs> yeah. You're at that end of it They're, now. <laughs> don't, let my, don't let my wife hear that. You're almost spending 300 bucks a month to shave. That's yeah, not I'm it. telling you, next yeah. week you're going to see it on my site. Cartridge yeah. raises will save you yeah. money. I'm like, only I mean, a few like, people will get it. But. You know, Aaron, Aaron, I mean, what was the first thing you made on that machine when you got it? Uh, first, so, so we got one at work first, and that was uh, the first okay. shaving-related thing that I made was a handle, and I still have it. And it's I took an Omega S brush and right. uh, knocked it out of the handle it came in and put it in the 3D printed handle. And it's actually still one of my favorites because that knot is awesome, and just adding weight to the handle made all the right. difference in the world. Right, but I'm um, I would almost guarantee that when you first made that first handle. You were not thinking, you know what? I'm going to go into business. No. You were thinking, I'm getting one of these machines so that I could start making all my own stuff. Well, yeah, it was right. work stuff, you know? It wasn't, yeah. I, yeah. and I made tons of stuff uh, before I ever even thought about getting a machine. I had one at work for uh, a year. That's cool. At least before, I, and I never thought about selling it or anything. 
But then yeah. it was the, you know, I made a lightsaber razor handle and people yeah. became unhinged. Yeah, Daniel Engel and some of my buddies, they love that stuff. Yeah. They go crazy for that stuff. And that's good. You know, there is a market for everything. So that's good. I'm glad that that, that works. Yeah, for, for, me, for me, the really the, the stuff that I print out of the wood is really the, um, as far as like the shave handles and stuff, that stuff is really yeah. kind of prime for me. I mean, it just, it comes out so nice. So like the tiki handle, uh, brush handle, right. and the, uh, the whiskey barrel brush handle, both of those are done in the wood. And it's, you know, for brushes, ow, they're pretty awesome. <laughs> He 3D nice. printed that child as well. Yeah, yeah that's a 3D <laughs> printed baby. There you go. He's allowed. Okay, one, so. guys, it's well, how long is this show go? It's 743. Uh, no, it's only 443. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> <four> <laughs> I got three more hours. <laughs> yeah. We went over uh we went over by 44 minutes today. And I figured, wow. you know, it's the the season finale yeah. till September. Yeah. So I, you know, and I'm glad that I was able to come on. The hot seats are that. always my favorite episodes, John. So like, yeah. I, I, I like to keep them going. I know Mantic had to cut out early, and I had a feeling he was going to. Uh, yeah. But these are always my favorite episodes, and I don't often get to have three open seats. Usually it's just one, right. so it's great having all of you guys at the same time because I prefer yeah. this kind of interaction. Um, but, yeah, so, you know. Yeah, this is a lot cool. more like the, uh, you know, the, the before and after parties at uh, a meetup. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. it's really know, to me the best part of a meetup. I agree. Yeah, the meetups yeah. themselves are so busy and crazy; you just don't get time. Right. Oh yeah, I don't get a chance to enjoy the meetup. Um, oh, I know. And it's a yep. it's a great time to critique afterwards. You know, I'll, I'll like, did did we pull it off? I don't know. Did we pull it off? Yeah. yeah so like, it's really yeah. it's a good place to process afterwards. I get the same. I get the same thing all the time. Yeah. Uh, our meetups are smaller, but when we have them, normally I'm bringing. Honing stones to teach how to hone razors. Yeah, right. So and strop. So what ends up happening is I spend two and a half hours stropping and honing razors for guys that just are standing in line. Yeah. Here, 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 because they know I'm there. Yeah. And then you know I eat a hamburger and drink a beer and the meetup's over. Yeah. Yeah. So I stopped bringing my stones. I stopped offering services like that because, you know, not not that I minded that we were doing that. But you're you know, missing the rest people, of it. I'm missing everything that's fun about it. You gotta so rotate I, it, John. You gotta find someone else yeah. that can do it in the next year and so on and so forth. Like I right. keep trying to outsource stuff, but while I'm outsourcing different parts, there's other things right. I think about suddenly that I need to do. And it's like so I can never get away from having some part of the organization. Right. And uh right. What I did was I had like for example, a few meetups ago, I I had taught one of the guys, Mike Molinari. He got into straight razor shaving with Italian blades, and he's right. in the Italian R&B group and all that. And he came to the meetup, and I told him, I'm going to show you how to do this and bring some stones. Yeah. Don't come unhanded, you know, with nothing in your hands because that's no good. Yeah. So <laughs> he, he bought a couple of stones, um, and I showed him, and then boom. Now he's honing razors for people. Yeah. You know, so there's, and granted, there's actually a great um, question uh, because, you know, I'm just starting to uh, some some straights are starting to show up. What is an affordable starter set of stones? Right. Well, unfortunately, there isn't one. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I'm talking about. There isn't one, you know, and I, I try to explain that I totally understand when somebody says they come in my house and they see all these razors and they're like, holy crap, how are you doing this? Well, you know what? When you when you own a Mike Martinez razor, you send it out to be honed by Mark Martinez. Okay, Mike Martinez razors. You know you're spending two, three, four hundred dollars or five hundred dollars on a razor, but a lot of guys what they do is they buy ten and twenty dollar vintage razors on eBay that that need to be cleaned up and honed. They instead of sending them out, they buy cheap stuff and then it doesn't work. What you need is you need a one thousand grit Naniwa. Uh, the green stone to set the bevel and then you need at least a 3,000 and an 8,000 and a finishing stone That's what you have to have and a lot. I tell everybody don't go cheap don't buy the thin stones Spend more money and get the right thing. That's gonna last you a lifetime. You know, they, they buy these stones that are 
uh, sixty nine dollars because and they're an eighth of an inch thick. And after you finished learning how to hone and they're bowed like this right. and they're paper thin, you're like, what happened? You know, yeah. buy the ones that are like an inch thick that are a hundred dollars and you spend three, four hundred dollars, but you own them. You can use them on your kitchen knives. You can use them on scissors. You can use them for anything. Yeah. You know, so that was my way of getting around spending 500 bucks on stones was I told my wife, look, I can hone all I'm a chef. I can hone all the kitchen, uh, you know, knives, the whatever you need done and bring your mom's stuff over. <laughs> bring grandma's kitchen See, knives. They're going to run behind you. See, build a support team, folks. That's <laughs> what you need to do so that village. so it doesn't yeah. seem like it's all on you. And, you know, what do you why, you know. You're spending five hundred dollars on homes, yeah. you know, and I use my homes once in a while now. Well, what got, I really I've got diamond stones for you know my woodworking tools, so right, so I don't have any right. trouble spending money. It's just trying to figure out, you know, what the no, right no, stuff I get it. Is. And you know, I'm I I use synthetic stones up to my finishing, and I know a bunch of guys that have used a million different types of stones. I stick with um, the Azuku Asagi Copa. It's eighty bucks, and it was. It's a like you know, copa is like irregular, so it's not it's not it's a nice thick stone. Chef knives to go is where I got it, yeah. and Love that's that. the only thing I use to finish my my razors off. Nice. That, and then fifty fifty on the on the leather, and then I palm strop, and that's that's my shave. But nice. once you have your razors honed, and you know most people that buy straight razors, like if you if I buy a straight razor from uh, you know, a reputable person that's and it's brand new. Yeah, it's already got a bevel set on it. Right. Once a bevel is set, you never need to really reset it. Right. You know, there's no need to do that. Yeah. But a lot of guys like to go back to nature. You know, they start off at one thousand, but man, you can you can have a blade stay alive forever just on a twenty thousand grit finishing stone and. And a leather strap. Right, yeah, you just keeping it know. up. So uh, I, I use um, and have for 20 some odd years, I use a, a Chinese vegetable cleaver. Right. And I bought it originally and I took it down to the like little Asian meat market and had the guy, the old dude, you know, mm -hmm. the old, old oh, yeah. Asian guy, the same old yeah. all the market. had him sharpen it up. And, he, and then, you know, when I came back for it, he said, This is the steel that you need. And it was, a, it was an F flick. Uh, super fine, F dick. Yeah, F dick. Yeah, I have the I have a set of F dicks. I mean, when I was a chef, I have yeah. a ton of stuff. But that's so for, and for fifteen years, I didn't have to resharpen that because I would right. just keep it up on that super fine steel and exactly. razor sharp. You know. Yep. And that's the thing is, most people get in the you know. Listen, you can buy a DE, and you could buy any blades you want they're dirt cheap for blades and you know you could buy a, a nice brush for nowadays 15 20 dollars you can get a brush you can buy a boar brush for 15 or 20 dollars you know even what the um the one i like uh, that i use is the um the uh, 1305 samog 1305 yep it's yep. a popular that's, one yeah and it's like 20 dollars yep. so you can put together a nice uh, set of gear you know but when you get into straight razor shaving, it completely changes everything because you, I have seven different strops. I have horse, I have cowhide, I have leather. That's it's a whole other a rabbit hole. Drawer, <laughs> lower drawer, you know, um, different types of leather. Right. And then cloth, you got to have different types of cloth yep. and pastes and all these stones. And, you know, you, you really get into it deep. Right, you know, you need the cat and nine tails of straps. It, it is. I'm telling you, you, get into it deep. And you know, it's funny because one of my first razors that I got was a Wading Butcher vintage wedge, and I could not hone that thing for six months. I tried, and um, I met up with uh, some guys in in the hotel in Miami, and um, uh, Lynn Abrams. I met up with him. And he spent three hours in the hotel room showing me how to hone right. this particular razor. And once I learned how to hone and the rolling edge strokes and and, uh, and all of these techniques, you know, I learned the circles from Lynn Abrams and everybody 
hates it, but it works really well if you take your time and you and you know it right. Sure. You know, sure. I mean, Lynn and I are not we don't hang out or anything. You know what I mean? But but he was the first guy that that I I got a set of stones and he taught me how to hone in yeah. person. Yeah. So you know, he was like one of the original YouTube guys. You know, he's got a video out there on honing that's probably got a million views on it. Oh sure. You yeah, know, he created the first forum, the first straight razor forum. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yep. And I well, got gentlemen, from him the the paddle because I wanted to make sure that I right. didn't roll the edge. I'm still rolling the edge somehow. I have no idea how because the edge doesn't <laughs> really? touch the leather in any way that would do that. So, yeah. You know what you what you should do is try, and I tell this to a lot of people that are learning. You know, try to um, set up your phone and shoot a video of of a wide view of your video of you stropping and then look okay. at the video and then send it to somebody that is a master stropper like Anthony Esposito or Lynn Abrams or anybody that you know that is a straight razor guy that shaves and has you got to know how to strop. Yeah. If you don't know how to strop, then it doesn't matter what kind of edge you have on the razor. Exactly. You know, but I tell everybody to do that. Even even DE guys that are learning, I tell them, here's a set. Take this, go to your house. I show them how to build a lather. I tell them how to operate the razor. It's a three-piece razor. Here's the top cap, how to take it apart, how to put a blade in. Now, find the way your hair grows. And I always tell them, you know, use like a cotton ball to, to feel so that you could see the way your hair your hair grows and go with the grain and shoot a video and bring it to work or send it to me so I could see it, yeah. you know, and then that's the best way to get critiqued. You know, most people like, they don't want to do that though. You know, they try to take it upon themselves and before you know it, you know, they're, so oh, I didn't really have a great experience and um, I got ingrown hairs and it didn't work right. Well, you know, show me. That's why I offer everybody, Anyone that wants to learn how to, to shave, come to my house. Yeah. Come in my bathroom. I have everything that you could possibly ever want to shave with. You know, there's nothing that I don't own practically. So, <laughs> you know, whatever it is, you're going to want to try it. I will tell you that I did recently get a new straw, and it's one of my favorites, and it's from uh, Matt Pisarchik. Yeah, the, uh, the Razor Emporium ones. Dude has a beautiful horse strop. Yeah. And it's nice. It's got a nice, fast, really fast draw to it. Mm -hmm. So when you're stropping, you, there's no hang up on the blade. Yep. And it works well with full hollows to like quarter hollows. Yeah. You wouldn't want to use it on a wedge, but it works well with everything in between. Yeah. No, which that is was, really good. That was important and, to him. I mean, as someone who's straight razor shaves and collects for years, like the strop had to be. amazing with that. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And the thing I even liked about it is, you know, you could buy two or three different types of leather and then interchange it in the handles. He sells it by the piece. Mm -hmm. yep. So you could buy a whole strop or you could buy you could buy a, a, a strop and then get an extra yeah, just piece components. of leather that's horse or something. Yeah. Yep. Ab absolutely. It works amazingly well. It really does. Well, guys, we are winding down. So if there's any closing... Closing statements. Anyone would like to me? Now we're doing a debate, but um, yeah. we are about to sign off. This again. This is our our final our season finale, folks. For those who are still watching, uh, is anyone still here? Yep, they're all still here. Yeah. Um, we're going to be <laughs> taking a little vacation for the next three months. Thank God, I finally get a vacation. Vacation, but uh, yeah. I will miss this, guys. But I want to come back uh, kicking ass in September with the, with my panelists. I just wish Scott was here for the send off, but. Uh, He'll get the facts later on. Again, he's on vacation, or he's on—I don't know what he's doing. I think he's in Washington. He's with yeah. his wife, so I can only assume it's vacation. But it part. might be, yeah. yeah. So uh, I don't know what's going on with that. So I hope he's having a good time. But uh, yeah. I want to thank everyone who was a part of the panel today, part of the hot seat discussion, and thank uh, you for having us. Thank you yeah. all for joining us over the last like three years, our our season of three years, and uh, <laughs> yeah, we'll be back. I swear we'll be back in September um, with an even better show. So. Thank you all. Excellent. Thank you, John. Thank you. Uh, well, I'm looking forward to it. I really am. Yeah, and more, here. I'd rather be shaving. 
Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. We're not taking a break on that anytime soon. Dude, I love <laughs> really those. Been enjoying I love those. <laughs> I put it on my big screen, sixty inch at work, oh, and God. everybody at my work watches. I'd rather be shaving, <laughs> and I stop work for fifteen minutes, and that's on. I swear that's exactly. I'm gonna video it next time. Uh, yeah, you should. Show. You should because Matt. I got seventeen people standing behind me watching the video, and they're all like. Can we leave yet? No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And when this is done, yeah, yeah, I have a huge photo. I, I work for uh, sports photography. Oh, okay, so I have okay. A huge monitor in my office. Yeah, yeah, and, and, uh, yeah. That's my show, man. I love. We that. finally watched it on a big screen last week when we were reviewing the latest episode before it gets edited. Like Matt and I give Jeff some notes for stuff mm -hmm. to add during the editing process, and uh, we finally watched it on his TV. And it's huge. I don't even know what the size of it is. But I've never seen it like that before. Neither had Matt. So we were like, wow, you can actually see the pores on my nose. Yeah. Having, like, like something in my mustache and what happened. You know, it was like, it was yeah. bizarre. But uh, yeah, I've never, I should probably start watching it on the big screen. But we, yeah. we typically a nose we watch our shows on our phone. Tree. I know. Oh, yeah. I know. Spotlight. Yeah, I mean, we use our phones for everything. Yeah. You know, and that's days, how I usually so. watch my own show. So like to yeah. see. Which is odd because back in the day when I was in a band, when you record something, when you're mixing stuff down, you take it out of the studio and you immediately put it in your car. Yeah. And listen to see how it sounds in the car. Now, nope, need to tweak it out again to bring it back to the studio because that's right. where we, you know, we listen to most of our music, or we did at the time, anyways. So, uh, same thing. You know, I need to start thinking that people are watching this on the big screen. So, I can only imagine what the last 20 episodes have been like. But now we, we have that in mind that the people like you are out there. Very but, nice, uh, man. Very this nice. Is this is it, folks. So, until September, see you in September. <laughs> you guys have a wonderful uh, vacation. Yeah, thanks, we'll John. Thanks. Soon. Thank you, Christian. Thank you, Aaron. Yeah. All right, and thank you all. See you guys later. Talk to you later, guys. Ow.